Baby, it's over. I mean, we both saw this coming. What a difference today makes. Huh. How long have you been tracking our car's value with Carvana? Just like seven months. Should we sell it? We hold. Hold. Silver vans are going for more right now. Should we? Oh. Our low mileage is paying off. You think we should? Hold. Depreciation's really heating up. You think? Hold. We just did 2.5%. Hold. Now. Hold on. I'm on. Already sold to Carvana. Go to Carvana and track your car's value today. FS1 College Football After Dark welcomes you to Scenic Provo, a new era for two programs tonight. BYU plays its first game as a member of the Big 12. Sam Houston plays its first game as an FBS program at one of the best places to watch a college football game, Lavelle Edwards Stadium in Provo. As we say hello and welcome to FS1 College Football After Dark, Alex Faust, Petros Papadakis here with you. A lot of unknowns for these two programs as they turn the page into a new era here in week one. Well, these days in college football, everything is a question mark, especially week one. But these are two very unique stories. Sam Houston State, not just in a new conference, Conference USA, in a whole new division. They've taken a step up very meticulously from the FCS to the FBS. And BYU, we all know, a great, proud program coming off some years of independence. Now they are in the Big 12, and they got Keaton Slovis, a mature quarterback, to lead them. Obviously started his career at USC last year with Pitt. Things got a little jumbled. They are so pleased with his ability to lead his polish and his maturity in this program. They can't stop talking about it. And for Sam Houston, some questions at quarterback make this man so important. Zach Herbacek, you see his numbers from last year. He can be very productive. Also in the return game, hits the hole hard, Alex. A lot of players that redshirted last year in anticipation of their jump up to FBS. Good, clean fun to be had by all in Provo here tonight. FS1 College Football After Dark is next. Subway refreshed everything, and now they're slicing their deli meats fresh. That's why the new Subway Series subs are preferred by this QB. And preferred by his old backup QB. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Have you been behind me this whole time? Yep. Right now, get a free foot long at Subway, like the Subway Series menu. Buy one foot long in the app, get one free. For free. That's what I'm talking about. Order in the Subway app today. No one can take better care of your child than you can. But when they start getting into everything, you may need a little help. So Duracell created the only lithium coin batteries with a non-toxic bitter coating to help discourage swallowing. Making safety simple and giving you more peace of mind. Baby, it's over. I mean, we both saw this coming. Become an auntie, book a flight, stay four nights, meet the baby, make the baby cry, give the baby back, fly home. Silver tier in a single trip, join one key and move up tiers fast. Well, what a night. 77 degrees, mostly cloudy skies, but otherwise a nice night in early September. To kick off a new season of college football under the lights at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, Kalani Sitaki in his eighth season at BYU. A lot of excitement around this program. He said the move to the Big 12 paid immediate dividends with recruiting and with the transfer portal. He had to rebuild a good chunk of this roster. There are a lot of question marks certainly coming in. They lost four of their top five rushers from last year and their quarterback, Ian Jaron. Paul and KC Keeler 
If you don't know his name, he is one of the legends of college football, still active in coaching, a two-time national champion, won a national title at Delaware way back in the early 2000s. Then a couple of years ago, this Sam Houston State program rattled off a tremendous season, the delayed COVID year, to win a national title. He is one of the top coaches in college football. Today, his first ever game as an FBS head coach. If I had to choose a coach to foster my program from FCS to FBS, it, it, it could very well be Keeler. He knows what he's doing, and they're riled up in Provo. BYU won the toss, deferred. So it'll be Sam Houston ball to begin. The Bearcats, 5-4 and four last year, now members of Conference USA. They redshirted most of their key players with the hopes that they could get either an opportunity to play or more time to play at the FBS level. Brilliant move, hard to do in the moment, but they've come through that moment, and here they are ready to compete at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Pretty intimidating place to start your FBS life. Intimidating team to play against, too. Scrapper. Underway in Provo. And the game will begin with a touchback. So Sam Houston State had some question marks coming into the year at quarterback. They tried a couple of different players last year at that position. Jordan Yates won the starting job last year out of camp. He's now a running back with the team. Keegan Shoemaker played most of last season at quarterback, but was told, ah, you need to be a little bit better. We're going to be bringing in a couple of other guys. Grant Gunnell was brought in, a transfer. But Shoemaker showed out in camp, and he gets the starting nod. He's led the team. He's going to run around. He's going to be exciting. They need his completion percentage up. First play from scrimmage. A shovel to Zacher Bocic. Top running back, their leading rusher from last season, Jacob Robinson, the Utah State transfer with the tackle. It looked like there was going to be some space here as Tyler Batty kind of doesn't set the edge, but everybody recovers quickly. Jacob Robinson coming up as a corner out of Orem, Utah, making a big tackle. But a nice seven-yard gain to start. Yeah, for sure, seven-yard pickup, and this pass is incomplete. Intended for Jay Rockwell, one of their tight ends, a redshirt freshman from Gilmer, Texas. Here's the Sam Houston State offense. A couple of veteran guys on their offensive line. And keep an eye on Noah Smith. Only appeared in four games, one of those guys that redshirted last year. Third down and three. The ball is snapped. Shoemaker wasn't looking for it. And he is in big time trouble and will be sacked. Tyler Batty gets to him. One of the top edge rushers coming into the season in the Big 12. And a three and out for the Bearcats. New defensive coordinator for the Cougs, Jay Hill. Wanted these guys to be more aggressive at the line of scrimmage. Batty sees that ball on the ground and starts to drool. Comes alive. Really dives for those feet. Almost got out of it, did Shoemaker. But a nice play to start the Big 12 out for BYU. A three and out, forcing a punt. Defense was a major storyline last year for BYU. They could stop the run. Could not stop the run all year. Flag comes in. They had the most rushing yards per game allowed since 2002. They allowed a good 173 per game. Dan Scowlin, the referee tonight. There is no foul for illegal substitution. Timeout. Sam Houston. They're first of the half. Well, BYU last year had six games with zero sacks. The first series on defense, they already picked one up. A lot of different faces, but some of these guys we know pretty well covering BYU over the years for Kalani Sataki, and you're talking about him, Alex, and, and his lineage, uh, obviously a BYU player, a great fullback, but coached at Utah under Kyle Winningham, coached at Oregon State. He's been around, and I can't think of anybody to foster BYU, a place that this guy cares deeply about. It's in his soul 
into the future. I can't think of anybody better than that man right there, Kalani Sataki. What a coach. What a family person in this program. It's an unusually young program this year, too. There are going to be some impact freshmen, they think. On both sides of the ball. Jason Cardell, the punter for Sam Houston. Picked up at the 37. This is Hobbs Nyberg. Return specialist knocked out at midfield. Chris Murray pushing him out. And BYU with terrific starting field position. 43-yard punt, 12-yard return. And right at midfield, the Cougars and Keaton Slovis will go to work. Today marks his 38th career collegiate start. This guy knows a lot of fight songs, and he's seen a lot of ups and downs. He's a different guy than he was running Graham Harrell's air raid at USC, that's for sure. And they are pleased as punch to have him leading this team. They had a few different guys that they could have brought in to play quarterback. Slovis came in and won the job. They say he's been an instant fit. Aiden Robbins has been a pretty good fit as well. Last season at UNLV, a couple years at Louisville. Preseason first team, all Big 12 at running back. They had to kind of stitch together this offensive line with a couple of transfers, but they're going to be some studs on the old line for BYU. Uh, the transfers they brought in uh, really are eye-popping. And the one that really is the one is Kingsley Suamata-Ia, Su who is one of the biggest uh, guys coming out of left tackle in the draft. But he transferred a year ago. Quick pass for Keelan Marion, former UConn Husky. We saw him play when he was at UConn. Injury derailed his season last year and is expected to get a fair share of touches for the Cougars this year. Defense for the Bearcats looks like this. This is the better of the two units by far, and they return a lot of key players from last season. Very proud of their linebacking core led by Trevor Williams. One of the great all-time Sam Houston Bearcats ever. And one of the best athletes in the nation at his position. Bruce Feldman had him number one on his freaks list coming into the season. The end of the flat, it's Chase Roberts, who scampers out of bounds. But the Cougars are making quick work. A 16-yard pickup and a first down. And this is what you want when you bring in a guy like Keaton Slovis. Just calmly get behind the protection move and throw the ball get chase roberts involved this receiving core as compared to last year so much deeper not as beat up of course they no longer have the great puka nakua who was an out of this world talent but they're a lot deeper than they were for slovis to distribute off the 28 yard line on first down slovis little pump fake floats this ball to the sideline overthrown intended for darius lassiter got tangled up with a Sam Houston player along the far sideline. and All trouble getting back to his feet. Jordan Morris, former Coastal Carolina, shot a clear, and he will stay down. Yeah, it looks like that left leg he's holding on to. He was the one locked up down the field. And yeah, just looked like he fell awkwardly on the leg. Flipping over. Looked like Slovis threw that one away. They're checking on that knee and the stability of it. So with the injury timeout, and Morris now to his feet. It's been a nice quick start for this BYU offense. Numbers were down last year. Just 31 points per game. 44th overall in FBS. There are 60 new players on the roster this year for BYU. Probably the most dramatic overhaul in Kalani Sataki's tenure at BYU. Probably in BYU history, yeah. without a doubt. And, and everybody's dealing with that kind of turnover. But after the last game last year of the regular season, the Stanford game, which we saw, uh, BYU fired most of the defensive staff, if not all of them, and moved on with Jay Hill from Weber State and kind of went from there, working the transfer portal. And they brought in a lot of exciting guys including a couple from Weber State who are expected to make an impact on D. On second down, handoff to Robbins. And a run off the left side that'll net him about four. 
This is one of the most interesting transfers of them all. Aiden Robbins, uh, junior out of Louisville and then UNLV. And he was a guy that Kalani Sataki's been all over every time. So the third time he hit uh, the portal, really, after the, the recruitment, he said, you got to come here. This is a big back, 6'3", 240 pounds with a great forward lean. And he really did steal the show from camp from super freshman L.J. Martin, who also made some big waves. A lot of options in the backfield for the Cougs. On third down, they're going to give it back to Robbins. And he has the first down. Robbins weighs more than every single Sam Houston State linebacker. And you see him working off the double team there. Working quickly, swing pass. Chase Roberts escapes an initial tackle, spins his way to the line to gain. And I believe they will give it to him, a first and goal for BYU. With the tandem set, a nice block from his teammate, Lassiter, finishes the play with physicality. Just short. So it is second down and one. Slovis ties for the end zone. He's got it. Just a very, very workmanlike, calm, cool, collected drive from the Cougars and they use their size and their strength and just lean on the Bearcats all the way down the field. That is the first career rushing touchdown for Keaton Slovis. I thought it looked different. <laughs> 38 starts between Pitt, USC, and now BYU. But for the first time, he's the one to take it in. Lovis, not a small guy. You know, 6'3", 215 pounds. He's battled some injuries throughout his career, but has never been timid as far as taking hits and standing in the pocket, showing his new teammates that he's not scared to plow down some defenders at the line of scrimmage. Score a touchdown. Start the year. Yeah, an efficient drive at that. Eight play, 50-yard drive. Slovis from the beginning of the year felt that the player run practices done before fall camp Started made a huge difference the group that they had already on the ground in Provo They went golfing a lot together a lot of team bonding away from the facility that they felt gave them a head start Even with all the new pieces you see a lot of that these days in college football because of all the new guys coming into different teams Teams need to get to know each other better. You're not in the dorms as a true freshman anymore. Uh, Kalani Sataki knows that. You have to team build, like being in a corporation and climbing trees and doing all that kind of stuff, you know. But what corporation were you climbing? Team trees? building. You know, we all go out together to the wilderness that, and come out a group. That's an OSHA violation. <laughs> well, KC Keeler, I mentioned him earlier uh, with Sam Houston State. What a resume. The only coach to win FCS titles at two different schools. 2003 with Delaware. He had several good teams there. Joe Flacco, remember, came out of that program. And then Sam Houston State. They won the spring national championship that was played in 2021, counted towards 2020. Well, the coach of the year in the WAC, that's where Sam Houston just came from to move into Conference USA. So a three and out the first drive. Hand off here to Noah Smith on the sweep. And Smith tumbles out of bounds, collides with the bench. And <laughs> somehow comes out the other side. He got up under there. Ben Bywater, one of the mainstays here, not a transfer, <laughs> comes in and makes the play there on the edge. Sam Houston trying to run with a little pace, get some offensive momentum going after that three and out and the long drive by the Cougars. Gain of five. Shoemaker connects with Zach Urbacek, and Urbacek slips by an initial tackle. Pushed out at about the 45-yard line, a flag on the play. Gain of 12, but we'll check the penalty marker. Urbacek all alone out there to make that catch and had a little bit of room to create, came up with that swim move.
This is going to go against Sam Houston. Pass interference. Offense number 81. 15 yard penalty. It's second down. It's Jay Rockwell looks like the blocking downfield before the ball was thrown. Redshirt freshman. The race is a pretty productive moment early where you need to have confidence for Sam Houston State. Backed up all the way to their own 15. Second down and 20. Handed off to a bot check. Nowhere to go. Tackled for a loss by Ben Bywater. Led BYU in tackles last season. It's third down. Great leadership by Ben Bywater. He's on the Bednarik watch list. Runs down the backside of that play. Where Bocek tries to throttle down a little bit to find a hole. And the second he does, he is just run down right in the middle of his back by Ben Bywater. 6'3", 235 sophomore. And he runs really well. Loss of five. Third down and 25. Shoemaker steps up, cracks helmets Ooh. together with Max Tooley. The stop is progress after just a five-yard gain, and the penalty really hurt the Bearcats, forcing another punt. You know, we talked all offseason and leading up to this game about all these transfers for BYU's defense, but who's making the plays? Tyler Batty, Max Tooley, Ben Bywater, guys that have been here. They're setting the tone right now at the leadership. Sam Houston's got to punt it away again. Hobbs Nyberg back to receive. And a pretty good punt. On the 38, Nyberg slips. Only a five yard return after a 47 yard punt. But still, another short field for BYU looking to double their lead. Season opener and the first game as a member of the Big 12 for BYU. Their first season since 2010 as a member of a conference. Played 153 games as an independent. 99 wins, 86 different opponents. Local papers calling this the toughest schedule in BYU's history. Remember they were in the Mountain West for several years. I remember the whack. Yeah. <laughs> If there's anybody who can make this team up for that kind of dramatic change, if it will be dramatic, we're not that sure, it's Kalani Sataki. They brought in a lot of reinforcement. Slovis floats the ball over the middle, hauled in, what a catch. Darius Lassiter, transfer from Eastern Michigan, a gain of 19, what a play. Slovis just not really pressured at all, and if he is, he looks very comfortable. Puts that between two defenders. Lassiter goes up, catches it with his hands. Just a lot of confidence early from Aaron Roderick's offense. The coordinator at BYU lauded as a guy that a lot of people would like to run offense for. He's pretty multiple and very creative. Well, even Slovis was saying that was part of the appeal coming to play at BYU is to play under Aaron Roderick. First down for the Cougars, and a pass too tall to handle for Keelan Marion. Second down from the Sam Houston 40. That's probably his first errant pass of the game. The earlier one was a throwaway, I think. Welcome those of you just joining us on FS1. BYU plays its first ever game as a member of the Big 12 Conference. Sam Houston State, their opponents, their first game as an FBS program. Already up 7-0, looking for more. Deion Smith, a couple of great moves after making a catch in the backfield. Flag comes in on the play after a gain of 12. If it stands, it's a first down for the Cougars. Eden Slovis, who has now passed for over 10,000 yards in his collegiate career. After Illegal block in the back. Offense number 61. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. 
It's second down. After throwing for 46 so far in this game, let's take a look at the penalty. Yeah, it's Waylon Lapuajo right there with the block in the back that sprung Deion Smith, who's the second string running back, kind of an explosive speed guy. Easy call to make, and we'll see how BYU tries to overcome this first kind of adversity they faced the so far in this game. The They've been pretty comfortable and getting whatever they want thus far. And that guy's been plenty comfortable as well. Or started his career at USC. A year at Pitt. 38th career start for Slovis. Parker Kingston, first touch of the ball game for the freshman from Layton, Utah. There are going to be some young players to see action for BYU. Unusual how many young players they felt really broke through at camp. This is one they really like, Parker Kingston. He is a track guy, elite speed, fastest player for BYU in pads, and they're starting to work their weapons now. Throwing the ball to Deion Smith, trying to get him outside, trying to get the ball in Parker Kingston's hands to get him comfortable. You're going to see them sort of foster in the new players and young players throughout this game if they can remain successful. So with the penalty becoming a factor, third down at 16, and Slovis nearly threw a pick. Davion Armstead got a hand to it, but an errant ball from Slovis in a fourth down. Yeah, hard to see that you could overthrow a guy like Isaac Rack, 6'6", 255, a great-looking tight end, but Slovis and him didn't really seem to be on the same page. And Sam Houston with some success. The penalty helps them out, and they force a punt. Ryan Rico to punt this away. Preseason watch list for the Ray Guy Award for the third straight year. One of the nation's top punters. And a fair catch is signaled at the 10-yard line. Bearcats will take over after a 36-yard punt. Looking to get some offense together. BYU up 7-0. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ Fall Blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Your paint is really bad. What? I said, best coffee I've ever had. Should have used Bear. Sorry, side wear. No, I said, should have used Bear. Today, let's paint. Right now, get America's most trusted paint brand at a new low price. Bear, only at the Home Depot. I'm the team mascot. Boy, am I running late. Ow, what a hit. And if you have cut rate car insurance, the cost to cover that might tank your season. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Is this your plan to watch the game today? I have to watch my neighbor's NFL Sunday ticket. It's not your best plan, but you know what it is? My plan from Verizon. Football season is here. Get NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV on us, a $449 value. Plus, get a free Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5, only on Verizon. Noon Eastern, 10 a.m. local in Boulder. Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffaloes will be running in for a big matchup with Nebraska. Big noon Saturday. Next Saturday, noon Eastern on Fox. What a game this afternoon. Oh, Shadur couldn't miss. I mean, he looked absolutely superb. And the offense looked great. It was a wild game. Gus and Joel sounded great. Can't wait for Saturday. Are you a believer yet? I have to be. I saw her face. Now I'm a believer. How could you not be? TCU had seven returning defenders. And Colorado came in there and had full stadium and lit him up. A lot of fun to watch. This is the third series of the game for Sam Houston State. Bearcats in their senior quarterback, Keegan Shoemaker. A low snap. Shoemaker's pass deflected at the line, falls incomplete. Third down. You see how they're trying to get Shoemaker in this game, short passing, quick passing, trying to find a way for him to get comfortable as their offense sort of finds its footing in this very, very difficult environment. This is a huge third down to try to see if Sam Houston can stay on the field. Bearcats only have four total yards of offense so far. 
0 for 2 on third down. Shoemaker looking, throwing, deep ball. It is juggled and dropped. Oh, Noah Smith had it in his hands, but couldn't reel it in. Fourth down. Noah Smith, one of those guys that redshirted last year so he could be on the field in this moment. And that was going to be a catch for a first down. Shoemaker made it happen. Smith caught it. The second time, nope, not even then. <laughs> the fourth down got a punt. Former all-conference selection, both the WAC and the Southland. And if you're just joining us, this Sam Houston program won an FCS National Championship just a couple of years ago. Really great program through the years in the FCS ranks. And their coach, KC Keeler, one of the best in college football. Good coverage downfield on the punt return. Hobbs Nyberg limited to just three yards on the return. 7 0 BYU. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. If you have moderate to severe Crohn's disease, SkyRizzy is the first and only IL-23 inhibitor that can deliver clinical remission and endoscopic improvement. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine or plan to. Liver problems may occur in Crohn's disease. Control of Crohn's means everything to me. Ask your gastroenterologist about SkyRizzy. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. It was our first time in Kyoto. Oh yeah, it was a whole new thing for us. We stayed in a room in Takashi's home. We told Takashi that we wanted to go to a nice sushi restaurant. He was like, I can teach you. <laughs> I think that's where the sushi party started. It was so funny. You got pretty good at it. Yeah, I think I'm quite talented. <laughs> <laughs> On season six of Fansville by Dr. Pepper, things are heating up. Mom, Dad, I have a girlfriend, and she likes college football. The stars have arrived. I've made my choice. This season, I will be drinking Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream. And everyone wants a taste of fame. Welcome back to Chuck's Take, because every fan needs a podcast. To get a thick color, I use two coats of maroon. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. I love your nails. Thank you. Portal anymore is like free agency in college football, and Keaton Slovis has taken advantage, of course, started his career at USC, one of the more prolific freshman quarterbacks they've seen in program history. 27 games, 7,500 pass yards in his tenure with the Trojans, and then a season at Pitt, a team that on paper was really good most of the year, just didn't pan out of the end, and comes over here to BYU for his fourth collegiate season. Yeah, and he said to us that he was so surprised how easy of a fit it was and how comfortable he was right away coming to Provo and being with this team and in their cocoon. It's been a good fit right from the get-go. Ball came out of the end. Aiden Robbins on the carry. In the second series for BYU, Alex, we saw him try to work some of their stuff, getting the ball to Parker Kingston around the edge, Kalani Sataki. Looking on, they tried to get it out to Dion Smith. Uh, they might not be as cute <laughs> this series since they were forced to punt. They might want to go back to Aiden Robbins and then work that play action with Slovis, which led to that first touchdown. Yeah, Slovis capped it off with his first career rushing touchdown. From midfield on second down, Slovis looks and finds a wide open Mason Fakahua. Junior from Cedar City, Utah. Gain of 11 and a first down. Fakahua is a really versatile guy. 6'2", 240, plays the fullback position, but H-back can line up right on the line of scrimmage next to a tackle. They used him in the play-action game there. And off to Robbins here. Yeah, nice tackle. That's Matthew Arribasala, redshirt sophomore from Cedar Hill, Texas on the stop, limiting the game. Really solid one-on-one -on -one tackle against a talented back there. Just a one-yard gain.
Second down and nine at the Sam Houston 38. You see BYU really taking their time. Back approaching three and a half to go in the first quarter. Rivers scored on their first offensive series. Slovis surges ahead and he's tripped up. And a shoestring tackle from Javon Leon, former AP FCS All-American. Yeah, he really froze the defense there, and the second that happened, he made his decision, put his foot in the ground, and went upfield. Impressive. Third down and five. Swing pass to the flat. Roberts slips by the initial tackle. Not the second wave, though. And this Sam Houston defense comes up with a stop. Isaiah Downs was the first guy there. The safety right at the legs. And that allows everybody to kind of come running and help out. Sam Houston with some good defensive plays, forcing a fourth down. Fourth down and three. Offense stays on the field. We heard about the aggressiveness on defense. Perhaps it applies to the offense as well. Slovis throws. It's deflected and incomplete. And the Cougars turn it over on downs. Slovis has been throwing some pretty catchable balls thus far tonight. That one, he really tried to fire. Incomplete, and the Bearcats take over. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Wow, you guys did great with this place. Yeah. And it was easy to buy with all the help we got from Navy Federal Credit Union. I can't imagine where we'd be without them. Great. So what's shaking? Nothing. Nothing's shaking. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. No matter where you're headed, with the right view, the right co-captains, and stunning American design and craftsmanship, you might not care if you ever get back. Monday night on FS1. I'll be back in L.A. for this game. Orioles and Adley Rutschman look to continue their fight for the AL East crowd. They take on the L.A. Angels. Monday night, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on FS1. Otani still racking up the home runs despite the torn ligament in his elbow. Do we have an answer to that question? I do Pat? not know. No? That looked like a Pokemon, though, that those guys drew. <laughs> Motion up front. Well, after a big defensive stand from Sam Houston, a chance to do some damage offensively. Only four total yards of offense still. they got to figure out a way to get a first down. They, they've got to find some comfort and stay on the field a little bit because their defense has given them the ball twice now, back-to-back, -back, even though BYU took over with great field position. Sam Houston's got to do so something offensively. Defense. defense. Oh, how about that? Hmm. It's first down. That can happen if you mess with the football that they put down, if you mess with the referee's process of getting the playoff. I guess they were clapping. Yeah, Close that'll snap. do it too. Disconcerting something. There's a catch across the middle. And at midfield, Shane Johnson brought down a gain of 14 and a first down for the first time tonight for Sam Houston. Shane Johnson with a little slant route, plenty of room. Right in front of Camden Garrett. Well-delivered ball by Shoemaker, his best of the night. Shoemaker passed for over 1,100 yards last year in limited work. 
Tries to dump this one off to John Gentry, who couldn't get his feet set. Transferred in from Utah State. We've seen him the last couple years in the Mountain West. Nice elaborate play with the end around motion one way and the screen coming back the other. They just couldn't complete it to where Gentry had his feet under him and could make some kind of play with the ball. Loss of two, second down and 12. There's a handoff. Left side. And nowhere to go. Gentry was searching, searching, searching. Couldn't find anything. A.J. Bongpachan, captain and another transfer from Utah State. Filling the hole right there. The cutback was not going to be there because a really solid tackler, a tackling machine in Bonpachang was waiting for him. You see his measurables there and a great leader, great young man to catch up with no matter where he's playing, Alex. <laughs> Third down and 13. Shoemaker's pass is caught by Johnson across the middle. He's met immediately by Jacob Robinson. Just a one-yard gain. And another drive that goes nowhere. They pick up one first down, but that's it. And now they'll have to punt. Completed passes are good for the confidence of this quarterback. But they're still throwing it pretty short. Not really opening things up. Have not really established her bot check yet. How long can this defense hang in there? Bob Snyberg appears to be bleeding from his right leg. Ever since that first punt return, yeah. Alex. <laughs> I've been noticing that. We reached the end of the quarter. It'll be the fourth punt for Sam Houston when we come back. BYU scored in their opening drive, but the Sam Houston defense has kept them in it so far. 15 minutes in the books after dark in Provo. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back! Cloud. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ. Happy tastes good. Get saucy. Applebee's all you can eat boneless wings, just $12.99. What if my type 2 diabetes takes over? What if all I do isn't enough? Or what if I can do diabetes differently? Now you can with Once Weekly Manjaro. Manjaro helps your body regulate blood sugar. And Manjaro can help decrease how much food you eat. Three out of four people reached an A1C of less than 7%. Plus, people taking Manjaro lost up to 25 pounds. Manjaro is not for people with type 1 diabetes or children. Don't take Manjaro if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Manjaro and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, vision changes, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis and gallbladder problems. Taking Manjaro with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Tell your doctor if you're nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which can cause dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I can do diabetes differently with Manjaro. Ask your doctor about once weekly Manjaro. FS1 College Football After Dark. Cosmo's got some moves, huh? My goodness. I mean, wow. 7 0 BYU. Especially with those big, cumbersome arms. Yes. It's quite the show. Who shanked punt? And we'll see where they mark this. All the way up to the. Oh, my goodness. Oh, running back. Side judge is going to get a little help there. Mark it out at the 40. Just a 13 yard punt. There is a flag here right at the 40 yard line. Penalty marker on the play.
And they did run into the punter, but how violently we will find out. But it, was it tipped or hit? Because if you yeah. hit the ball, it doesn't make a difference. First blush, we'll see a replay, I'm sure, shortly. But, like, first blush, it seemed like it was shanked. But we'll see. Jordan, the kick. Holding. Return team. Number 37. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. It's first down. All right. Nothing to do with a kicker. Fifth punt for Sam Houston. Just one first down. But BYU has so far not taken advantage of their opponent's struggles in offense. Well, I mean, BYU has shown up in this game, came down, took the ball down the field, and that was the moment that they said, wow, look, we, we've got our guys, we're rolling. Ever since then, Sam Houston's defense has really kind of carried the torch. They have not had any help from their offense or their special teams, as you just saw that, that short punt helped out by the holding penalty. But Sam Houston's defense has really put their foot in the ground so far in this game and said, we're here, but how long can they hold up against the very large BYU offensive line, the big backs, all the weapons that they have. The mantra for their defensive coordinator, Joe Morris, is swarm and compete. Swarm and they're and doing compete. That. That's what they're doing. They're undersized, but they're up for the fight. Slovis taking a shot, and this is overthrown. Chase Roberts, the intended target. Davion Armstead in coverage comes up hobbling. And he'll hobble over to the sideline. Slova started the game pretty much on point, but last few passes have been overthrown. You know, it's interesting. One of the criticisms for him all those years back at USC was sometimes he was trying to be too perfect. Seems like he's trying to let loose here today. Hasn't connected on any deep shot as of yet. Deion Smith spins his way forward for four yards. Colorado transfer. Slovis started four for five, 46 yards. Since then, P, he is two for six for just 13. And they're trying to get these backs involved, and that's really the way to get Slovis going. That's what led to the first touchdown. Lean on him, get some yards on first and second down, and see what you can do with a third and manageable. That's pretty much what this situation is. They're down at six. Slovis rolls to his right. Gets a nice block. Flag comes in. Pass is caught. Isaac Rex elevates to make the catch. The veteran tight end. But a flag comes in. It's a 13-yard gain, and we'll see if this first down stands. You, uh, BYU starting to get hurt by penalties here. They, they wanted Chase Roberts on the edge, and he ended up running kind of an out and up. And then Isaac Rex sort of bailed out Slovis, but why did Slovis have that much time? I'm sure we'll figure it out. Isaac Rex, who just made that catch a couple of years ago at a really severe ankle injury, took a long time to recover from. Finally healthy. Doctors said at the time it was a career-threatening injury. It happened Thanksgiving weekend against USC 2021. Struggled all of last year with pain, lingering effects. Had to miss several practices. Still caught six touchdowns playing through the Played pain. the whole year, yeah. but he was not the same player. They talk about him this year, and they say he is a completely different guy. And you could just see it physically, the way he's moving. Great to see him back to his old form. Still trying to sort out what this penalty yeah, a lot was. of talk about this it appears it's going to go against BYU talking with uh, Casey Keeler about what he wants to do whether to could be multiple calls on the play and that's yeah. why they're trying to sort out which one Keeler wants to enforce illegal low block offense number 20 that penalty is declined. Ineligible downfield. Offense number 83. Five-yard penalty and a loss of down. It's fourth down. Formation-wise, Rex was not in the right position, which made him ineligible. 
like we said, he was kind of a last second bailout on the play. Uh, either way, the Deion Smith cut block there uh, would have negated things anyway. And you're right about those penalties. They're, they're starting to pile up for BYU. And it looked like they had an offensive rhythm for Coach Sataki's team when they, they took the field when they were getting the ball to Aiden Robbins and working Keaton Slovis off of that. We didn't see much of it until they started to kind of distribute the ball to other guys. And uh, since then, they just haven't moved the ball efficiently at all. Already the fourth penalty on the Cougars. And we're just one minute into the second quarter. BYU to punt. And take the penalty with the loss of down. No brainer. It's Ryan Rico. Who averaged 46 yards punting last season for BYU. An 83 yarder at one point a couple of years ago. Booming kick here from the 17. Noah Smith on the return. Brings it out 10 after a 58 yard punt. Sam Houston's defense doing just enough in a 7 0. Lead for BYU here in Provo. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Sierra with hands-free driving offers the most advanced and luxurious pickup in its class. Yeah, it rocks. You've earned this, so hold it up high. You're not just a store clerk. You're a line cook. Tour guide. Lifesaver. Sometimes therapist. But always there, from open to close a one-person operation that's the heart of the neighborhood. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Medela, the mark of a fighter. Oh, that's a nice track. Good job by the truck. Timely. Wow, look at that bowl. Bring it in uh, silverware and stuff. <laughs> oh, look at that guy. <laughs> Who dresses up as... Anyway, look at all these guys with the food names. We got Meatball in this one, right on the uh, line of scrimmage, holding up that offensive line. Quentin Rice, it's good to have that starch. Hank Pepper. Fish McWilliams. <laughs> it's good for you. Fry. Try to cut him out, but man, fries are good. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Urbacha leading rusher for Sam Houston. Can they find something offensively to get a rhythm going to put this BYU team in an uncomfortable position on defense? They've not been in that sort of position throughout the first half. Shoemaker's completed three passes, but just for 12 yards. They'll keep it on the ground. Malik Phillips sweeps to the left. And is tackled in the field of play by Ethan Slade, the strong safety, the sophomore from Orem, Utah. Ben yeah. Bywater on the play as well. Yeah, supported by Bar Bywater and Max Tooley. And, and trying to get out to the edge on this BYU team is, is not easy. These guys can run really well. And in the middle, you got guys like A.J. Vonkachan making plays. They've shown themselves to be pretty stout thus far. Third down and nine. Shoemaker finds a hole, but it quickly disappears. Bywater knocks him down. Isaiah Banya there as well, the Boise State transfer from Alberta. Yeah, good to see Banya getting involved. Him and Jackson Cravens came over from Boise State right at the legs of Shoemaker. 
preventing the first down. And so far, Jay Hill's defense looking rebuilt and intact against this Sam Houston team taking a step into the FBS, forcing another punt. Sam Houston 0 for 5 on third downs. Spiraling punts from Jason Cardell. Fielded at the 13, but Nyberg is swarmed. Now there's that swarm and compete once again. This time on special teams. No return, a 45-yard punt. Still just the lone score for BYU. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Cloud. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. You said close your eyes, don't look down. Fall into me, and I'll catch you, darling. We'll dance in the street like nobody's watching. It's just you and me, and the song. I'll Celebrate every kiss. Get zero down special financing with the K Jewelers credit card. Stop, stop, stop! Found it! Can I get ruling? Don't beg. It's unbecoming. Is that good? I, I can't tell. There's no such thing as out of bounds. Find adventure at the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event. Now, BYU, 100 plus seasons. Last year marked the 50th anniversary of Lavelle Edwards hiring as head coach. 1984 national champions, Ty Detmer won the Heisman, their only Heisman trophy in 1990. And they joined the Big 12 in all sports. Had been in the uh, WCC for basketball. Now they are part of a burgeoning conference in the Big 12. Lot to be proud of, and they've really done a great job fostering this team into the future. This program. Deion Smith with a reception here. Knocked out of bounds. Short game. They really took it to the chest of Demarcus Crosby at the end of that run. Always a real scrappy, mean streak in these BYU teams. Crosby just found that out. They play with an edge, and I mean that in a good way. This year in camp, they scrimmaged a lot more than they had in years past. They were a lot more physical, full padded practices. And they wanted to start right away with a more physical presence, both sides of the ball, speaking of physical presence. It's a nice tackle made. Daniel Tupola for Sam Houston. Tupuola just working his way down the line of scrimmage, refusing to be blocked, crosses the face of Connor Pay and makes a physical tackle just when it looked like BYU was trying to establish the run again. Here's another third and pretty long for Keaton Slovis. And what's interesting, BYU, remember Sam Houston redshirted all these guys last year, both sides of the ball. They still held opponents. Granted, it was in a transitional year from FCS to 35% on third down. A third down and nine here for BYU. A little jump throw on the screen. Kingston turns the corner and cannot reach the line to make. It'll be fourth down and short. Well, they hit the crosser first. Keaton Slovis almost hit by Markel Perry. Coming on a blitz, he gets the crosser. Kingston, one of the fastest guys out there. Fourth down and two. And they're going to punt. And it's just been that type of game, sort of a, an armistice of sorts. Yeah. I, want, I want to say this is uh, the eighth punt combined. Wow, what 
A tackle downfield. Noah Smith had no chance on a 48-yard punt. Marcus McKenzie flying downfield. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. Oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. I told myself I was okay with my moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. With my psoriatic arthritis symptoms. But just okay isn't okay. And I was done settling. If you still have symptoms after a TNF blocker like Humira or Enbrel, Rinvoke is different and may help. Rinvoke is a once daily pill that can dramatically relieve RA and PSA symptoms, including fatigue for some. It can stop joint damage, and in PSA, can leave skin clear or almost clear. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Done settling? Ask your rheumatologist for Rinvoke. And take back what's yours. Learn how Abby could help you save. We got to welcome in our newest Fox Sports colleague, Mark Ingram. Oh, yeah. In Fort Worth, did a little crowd surfing. But who did it better, P? Looks like he's going to almost quicksand for a moment, like <laughs> he was going to fall. Oh, Cosmo. Well, who did it better? Yeah. Well, look at Cosmo. He's ascending. I mean, Cosmo doesn't have a Heisman. Maybe he gets part of Detmers. <laughs> but Ingram looked great, and he was awesome this morning. What a day uh, in Fort Worth. And Houston's offense back to work. And this time is dropped right into the breadbasket of Charles Crawford. Keegan Shoemaker under duress, got rid of it quickly in an 18-yard pickup. Comes off a fake with the end around, and that holds the linebackers just enough to get it to Crawford in that hole. Best play by Shoemaker so far. And longest play from scrimmage for Sam Houston until that one. Malik Phillips across the middle. And out of nowhere, Sam Houston's offense rips off 18 and 21 and a first down for the Bearcats. Malik Phillips showing some length and some ability to get up and get that ball and a nice push forward by Shoemaker. They're going with some tempo now. Shoemaker hands it off. Uh, this play blows up. Crawford got the call. Second down. Now a little bit of a moment to kind of survey things with a couple of plays that have worked. We'll see what Brad Cornell said the OC can do with it for Sam Houston. Well, up until this drive in the game, there have been more punts than points and combined first downs. Just a couple of Sam Houston first downs for this drive. Gain of four here on the quick hitter. Tackle made by Camden Garrett, one of the transfers from Weber State, along with their coach, Jay Hill, the defensive coordinator. Third down and six. Made it manageable with that short throw to Rockwell. The crowd is shaken. To bring this defense to life after some life from Sam Houston. Sam Houston 0 for 5 tonight. On third down, Shoemaker floats the ball to the sideline. A little bit of grabbing along the sideline. <laughs> Jay Rockwell wanted a penalty marker, but won't get one. That's Camden Garrett on defense. One of those transfers that came over from Weber State with Jay Hill. And here he is one-on-one. -on -one. He's working that hand. They could have definitely thrown something there. But look, he puts the hands behind his back. That's how. You fool the ref into saying, I didn't do it. When people put their hands up, that looks like guilt. You put your hands behind your back, you're just strolling in the park. There's Jay Hill. 
He'd be pretty happy the way his defense has played thus far. I don't know what you can say for the rest of the Cougs. Timeout BYU here. BYU last year, they were the 10th worst in FBS in terms of third down conversion defense. 46% for the opponents last year. The theme for their coaches from the beginning of camp, and especially from this new coaching staff on defense, was start fast on that side of the ball. And they have. They played well on that side of the ball. Uh, a lot of that kind of coincides with what we were talking about earlier, right? The really violent practices throughout camp trying to make this team more physical. Jay Hill trying to set the line of scrimmage a yard behind to where it is, being really aggressive with these guys. That wasn't really their style last year. And, you know, Kalani Sataki's very interesting because a former fullback, a guy that can coach on the offensive side, understands offense, but was a defensive coordinator, really made his fame as a college football coach in the Pac-12 in Utah as a defensive coordinator. And here he is overseeing all of it, and him and Jay Hill very much on the same page. At least that's what they told us. Well, it's a young group. They had to. They look good. They, they had to construct a brand new two deep, essentially. And this will sail into the end zone. So far, Sam Houston bending but not breaking. BYU still up seven zip. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back! Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. <gasps> there he is. It's right there. Oh, he's straight ahead, he's straight ahead. Go, go, go. Cover more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. The journeys life takes you on rarely follow a straight path. But it's the detours that make the trip worthwhile. We're built for the journey with you. Commerce Bank. Challenge accepted. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime, Colorado proves it's ready for prime time, while Caleb Williams' campaign for another Heisman is off to a great start. And our guys give their early playoff predictions. All that and more at the half. Will you join us, Alex and Petros? Back to you. Yeah, I think we will. We have no choice. But <laughs> that's true. We don't have anywhere to... That's how I am with the babies, and it's frowned upon. <laughs> Why? Yeah, I got a big face. The kids don't <laughs> like it. Not just the kids. <laughs> Seven sixteen to go, second quarter. BYU still just a seven nothing lead. First drive looked great. Since then, sputtering. Fifty yards and a touchdown. The last four combined, fifty four yards. And how about this swarming and gang tackling by the Sam Houston defense? Nowhere to go for Fakahua. Yeah, they really dropped a lot of guys. Slovis had plenty of time, but nowhere to go. He dumps it off to his fullback. Gets four. Quick hitter for Merritt. He spun out at about the 30-yard line. Should be good enough for a first down. And it is. Be interesting to see how Aaron Roderick handles the rest of this game. They felt great about the way they started the game, like you were saying, Alex. But since then, sputtering, maybe getting a little too cute. Uh, penalties hurt them, obviously, trying to get maybe too many guys involved before they establish themselves. See how they handle the rest of this drive to try to take back some of the momentum of this game. Well, we have yet to see guys like Keanu Hill get a touch. Slovis in trouble, goes down, ball came out, and the play is whistled dead. Looks like he was throwing it away as he was being twisted down by Javon Leon. Leon just twist him down, and Slovis had Tase in the area, the tight end wearing the number 99. 
which is what the official is explaining to the crowd here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. But great penetration by Leon blowing up that play and getting BYU behind the sticks again. Yeah. Just can't get out of their own way offensively right now. And Sam Houston's got a lot to do with that. Well, Leon, a former FCS All-American. Second down. On the 31, handoff to Smith, met immediately by Trevor Williams, and Smith maybe gets a yard out of that, but Trevor Williams, one of these guys that only appeared in four games last year, but expected to make a huge impact for Sam Houston. He's a sideline to sideline player and the team leader. No one was getting outside of him. He battled Deion Smith all the way, waiting for the pursuit to come. Coach Keeler said he's the best linebacker that he's ever seen. This guy makes a lot of plays. Not a big guy, just barely uh, five foot nine, 210 pounds, plays a lot bigger than that, gets everything out of that body, and has been one of the great Sam Houston defenders of all time. Yeah, we talked to him earlier in the week. That red shirt was hard for him to swallow. Play clock winding down here, and Eden Slovis and the Cougars are going to call a timeout. But for so many of these guys for Sam Houston, you know, you're you're you want to play you're there but they sold the vision of if you if you can wait one year we will give you the time if you can stick with us and elevate this program together as a group and they got buy-in from so many guys including trevor williams who's a former all southland selection well like you said it helps you know you win the fcs title you kind of feel like your coach knows what he's doing Coach Keeler really does know what he's doing all the way back to Rowan University, to Delaware. This guy's been a legend in the FCS world. So if there's anybody to bring you into the future like this, it's him. And it's very difficult. It feels unnatural not to play when you can play when you're a team leader. Very unnatural. And he said it was a terrible thing to go through. Yeah. But coming out the other end, I think they're going to be very pleased with the way that they purport themselves at the next level. It's been a class act program from the start ever since Keeler came in. Well, they've shown up defensively. Absolutely. Third down and 14. Slovis drops back, has time, tries to connect with Rex. Off the tell, looked like that may have been deflected ever so slightly. Meatball Smith, that's Akeem Smith, in the hand in there. Ooh, look at that push he's getting on Miley, the center. Wow, just a one-armed bull rush from Meatball. Goodness me, getting up on Slovis and forcing that short errant throw. And right now, people are starting to get a little uncomfortable in their seats here watching this BYU offense. Yeah, you can hear the murmur. Yeah. Booming punts, oh. and it is muffed. It's going to be picked back up by Urbacic, but that could have been disaster. A 65-yard punt, and Zach Urbacic, this is the first time he's returning punts in-game. He had done it for years in practice, but it was always behind guys on the depth chart. This is the first time he's taken that live action. A little bit of a different feeling, <laughs> especially returning punts. Very difficult thing. He does get it back, takes a big hit. There's a flag on the play. During the kick, holding, return team number 32. That penalty is half the distance to the goal. It's first down. See what kind of position. He really had to back up because of how good that kick was. Ended up kind of in no man's land and just gets it back. Well, after all of that, going to start from their own three and Shoemaker is going to start in his own end zone taking a shotgun snap handoff and Gentry breaks an initial tackle nice run for John Gentry to get out of the shadow of his own end zone a pickup of eight second down they're looking for him to be explosive and that time he saw a small hole and kind of got skinny through it and really punched it through 
They've got to find a way to catch some rhythm. We've seen BYU offensively playing really slow in this game, and maybe that has something to do with it. Sam Houston trying to pace them out just a little bit. That's interesting. When Sam Houston went up tempo a little bit, it seemed like they were in a better rhythm. Second down and two. Fake the handoff. Little sidearm action connecting with Jack Sherrod, the tight end, the sixth-year senior for a first down. Led the Bearcats among tight ends in receptions and yards last year. Four years at Davidson before transferring in. Not quite Steph Curry, but big body guy. Six foot five, two hundred fifty-five pounds. Steph Curry's not the only guy who ever went to Davidson. I'm not aware of anybody else other than him and Sharar. Fair enough. Quick hitter. And that's Ife Udeyi. It goes nowhere. Crew Wakely in on the stop for BYU. Yeah, Dayi's one of those guys on the outside that Shoemaker wants to get involved more. Him and Noah Smith, their most productive perimeter players. They haven't really been able to get it to them much. Dayi, who had the game-winning reception in the FCS National Championship game a couple of years ago. Second down and nine. On their own 15. Shoemaker, it's the snap, connects with the man in motion, that's Gentry. And Gentry piles ahead. Good series for Gentry. Give it to him. Yeah, Jay Rockwell blocking down the field. Gentry in the middle making some plays early in this drive. That time catches that swing route. Gonna mark him short, Pete. See if they can line up and get a push here. This is a... A newly constructed BYU defensive front, but a pretty aggressive one. A day in motion. Hand off to Gentry. He is stopped short. He surges ahead, trying to get it on the second effort. But it will be fourth down. Yeah, I don't know if I like the shotgun. I mean, you're a shotgun team, and that's who you are. But the shotgun and short yardage, even with the pistol, with Gentry's got a little bit of momentum, he really had to stop his momentum twice, once to get the handoff and once at the line of scrimmage. They're going to go for it. This is a big moment here with only 150 left. Yeah, clock moving, under two minutes to go. And BYU will have the ball to begin the second half, remember. Gonna let this breathe and call a timeout of the Pierce. Try to draw him offside. That's all it was. I was horrified to see him in a shotgun again and for the short, but looks like they were just trying to draw him off. We'll see what Keaton Slovis can do if they end up punting it in this two-minute drill. 94 seconds to go in the half. Still just seven zip. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. Oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. The journeys life takes you on rarely follow a straight path. But it's the detours that make the trip worthwhile. Whatever discoveries you make along the way, whatever unexpected turns you take, it's nice to have someone along for the ride. And whether you're set on your destination or just trying to enjoy the scenery, we're built for the journey with you. Commerce Bank. Challenge accepted. A senior mayor. With this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you. Yeah, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But this one's round. No, I don't know. Maybe a red bull will help you see it from a different slant. 
Yes, I got it. We'll build it like this. Perfecto! Red Bull gives you wings. Joe, Mike Hill, Emmanuel Acho, Chris Peterson coming up, but I guarantee you, they do not have as much drip as these kids. Man, look at those sweet chains. That's cool. They're personalized. And it's crazy that those kids' names are also Petros and Al. Oh, who who could have guessed the odds of that happening? In Provo, low. <laughs> Sam Houston State punting for the seventh time tonight. I'll tell you, Alex, the Cougars offense could go a long way to uh, relieve a lot of stress that has started off in this stadium the last 20, 30 minutes. If they can put together a bit of a drive here where you see the total yards there, put together a two-minute drive to get a field goal or touchdown at the end of this. And Sam Houston's outgained BYU this quarter. A very forgettable quarter of offense for Aaron Roderick and Keaton Slovis. And I think that's interesting, too, because this was of the two units, one that on paper was going to be better coming into the season anyway. They looked like they filled a lot of holes and more depth at the wide receiver position, addressed their problems with the O-line, good backs. Slovis off the hands. Oh, the intended target, Isaac Rex. Great coverage by Davian Armstead. Great gap. Not allowing Rex any room. Armstead's given up about 70 pounds between him and Rex. And look at him, he's all over him. Like a wild dog. Pulls him down and celebrates. And right now, Sam Houston is bringing the aggression, bringing the swarm and compete right to the face of the Cougs. Slovis on second down, rolling, throwing, and a diving catch made in front of the sideline by Parker Kingston. He's been far more of a target than I think either of us would have guessed at the beginning of the day. Yeah, we saw him get him the end around earlier, and you expected to see that get the freshman the ball, but then they hit him on a crossing route, and that time the comeback using that speed, and Slovis really stepped into that one and threw a fastball. And all that just to create a third and manageable. I mean, they are struggling. Seven-yard pickup. Five-yard pickup, a bigger part. And play clock winding down to three, to two, to one. And I believe they got the timeout first. Well, everybody we'll in the stands saw it. You know, everybody's feeling it. They had Aiden Robbins on the wrong side for the protection, and he had to jump over and... The frustration starting to show on the face of Kalani Sataki. I wonder if they got it in time. I don't think so. Delay game. BYU. Five-yard penalty. Mm. It's third down. You worked that hard just to get a, a comeback route to a freshman to create third and five. And you line up and, and you shift around a little bit and, and can't get yourself a play off. Get a delay a game. And, and end up with third and ten. Just a frustrating. That's pretty much the in a in a nutshell what this uh, half after the first drive has been like for the BYU Cougars offense. On third down, Slovis pumps, throws, and a one-handed attempt by Rex to reel that in. Well covered by David Fisher. It's fourth down. And with a minute nine on the clock and still with a timeout in their pocket, Sam Houston's going to get the ball back. Fisher gives up 75 pounds <laughs> to Isaac Rex. And he was physical and all over him. And now you're starting to see the frustration. They're trying to get the ball to Rex, and they figure physically he can just get up and make a play and dominate these guys with his big body. Didn't happen twice on that drive. And another punt setting up a two-minute drill for the Bearcats. What is going on? Well, Punt of the game wow. combined. It's a shame that Joe Morris is up in the press box. This will be down around the 10. We'll see where they mark that from McKenzie downfield. The kick coverage. But I, I, I would have loved to have seen a reaction from Joe Morris with his guys in the, the Bearcat D. It, 
they deserve a lot of credit. BYU's offense certainly sputtering, but at least from, from our standpoint, it seems like Sam Houston deserves the credit here. Well, they're not up there against air, yeah. are they? Yeah. I've seen offenses sputter against air, and it's not pretty. <laughs> but Sam Houston is a defensive team. That's part of their identity. And Joe Morris, and his defensive coordinator, has set up a nice situation again, uh, one of many <laughs> that they've yeah. set up for this Bearcats offense. We'll see if Shoemaker can do something with it. And Slovis, they're going to have a lot to talk about during halftime with Coach Roderick to try to fix the identity that this offense has shown in the first half or lack thereof. So the Bearcats start from their own 11, taking no risks here. Robacic getting the call. Clock moves inside of a minute. Sometimes you run the ball like that, try to get a quick hitter, and if he breaks a little bit, then you get rolling and you run your two-minute. If he doesn't, gets tackled, you let the clock run, and that seems to be what happened there with Herbacek. Well, BYU hasn't shut out a team in a first half since September of 2020. Season opener against Navy. They led 31-0 at the half, won the game 55-3. This is far less comfortable than that. And the defense was the big question mark. And they fixed it with Jay Hill, they felt like, in the offseason. Paid him a whole bunch of money to not be a head coach anymore at Weber. He comes here to BYU, and defense looks pretty good. Meanwhile, for Sam Houston, they've got to feel great going into the half. Assuming this remains just a 7-0 score, they haven't beaten an FBS opponent since 2011. They beat New Mexico en route to a 14-1 season, their only loss coming in the FCS National Championship game that year. That's how good these Sam Houston teams have been through the years. Multiple double-digit winning squads getting the National Championship games. Well, you know, th this was a lopsided matchup just physically. Looking yeah. at the BYU offense and the Sam Houston D and the way the game started, Alex. BYU took the ball and just leaned on Sam Houston. And, and Keaton Slovis leaned into the end zone, scored a touchdown. And kind of looked like that's how it was going to be. And then suddenly the BYU offense, just the, the transmission fell out. <laughs> you know, they're smoking. They got to find a way to, to fix this thing up at half. So Shoemaker takes a knee and takes Sam Houston into the locker room. No points, but certainly it's a game that the Bearcats can work with. BYU, meanwhile, their offense after their opening series has yet to get going. Interesting game here in Provo to close out week one. You're watching FS1 College Football After Dark. State Farm Halftime is next. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ Fall Blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Life is full of surprises. Pregnant. And big or small, they often come when you least expect them. So when life gives you lemons or lemonade, it's good to know that someone's got your back. Whatever ups and downs come your way, we'll get you the tools you need to tackle them. After all, we're built for the unexpected. Commerce Bank. Challenge accepted. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not not like like the good, good old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome to the State Farm FS1 College Football Halftime Show. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
Hey, welcome inside our FS1 studios in Los Angeles. I'm Mike Hill, along with Emmanuel Acho and Chris Peterson. We'll get you back out for the second half between Sam Houston and BYU shortly. But first, let's get you caught up on other action from around the country with our State Farm halftime highlights in the game of the day. What a Colorado, day. Ready for prime time. Their opener against TCU. And uh, how about Travis Hunter today? Travis Hunter was the best college football player on the day. A two-way player, number one player when he came out of high school. And he showed why. Interception stopping a TCU 95-yard drive. Prime is excited, baby. Yeah, 134 total snaps, 70 on offense, 119 yards receiving. Oh, Shador Sanders just as good. Finds Dylan Edwards. Both of those players have four touchdowns. Sanders, a Colorado record, 510 yards, wow. four TDs. Colorado wow. back in front, 45-42. Oh, final chance for TCU, fourth and nine, down by three. Chandler Morris, Jared Wiley, stretching for the first, can't get there. And how about prime time? Colorado with the upset on the road, 45-42. And you thought, I told you Travis Hunter played 134 total snaps. This took him over to 160 snaps. <laughs> oh, they still got energy. Uh, what is he eating? Uh, All kind of sugar. Prime time after the game. <laughs> Let's go. I'm about to get comfortable in a minute. Because guess, guess what? These young men in there right now, they believe. Not all of them believed before. But right now, they came up one by one, twos by twos. Coach, we believe. Now they believe. Now Boulder believes. People in the front office, people, people in the building, the fans, the students. Now everybody want to believe. I'm good with that. We got room. Y'all believe, don't you? No doubt about it. Everybody believe. Look at that offense. Shadour Sanders leading the way. I'm about to get comfortable. Right now, in just a few minutes. And look, he said he was bringing his own luggage, and it was Louis. It's Louis and Gucci, you right? Heard. Big noon kickoff with more. Coach Prime and the Colorado rebuild was the conversation of the offseason. It is the conversation in college football going forward right now. They're going to be in the top 25 next no week. Doubt. And Travis Hunter has my Heisman vote at this moment. Yes, We've sir. all been in this game for a long time. I'm not sure I've ever seen what we witnessed today. Ooh. One of the greatest individual performances. He played 134 plays. Ooh. That's 110 degrees out there on the field against a good team. Ooh. 70 on offense, 64 on defense, 11 catches for a buck 20. He had seven targets, only gave up one catch, and he made a game-changing interception. And he, he could have won another quarter. That's one of the greatest Wild. performances I've ever seen. Man, it was amazing, Coach. And we know about Travis Hunter. We know about Shadur Sanders. I asked Coach Prime when I talked to him earlier this week, who should I be watching out for that nobody knows about? He said, this player from uh, named Dylan Edwards, that he coached at Prime U in Dallas since he was four years old. He said, watch out for him to be making some big plays this year. And look at him in the first game. Six carries, 24 yards, and a touchdown. Go along with five catches, 135 yards, and three touchdowns. Wow. And how about the biggest play of the game? A fourth and two conversion in the flat. Shador Sanders throws a perfect pass to him, makes somebody miss, goes up the sideline, put Colorado up for the lead. Shador Sanders, man. Shador what Sanders. a freaking, Unbelievable. What a coming out party at Colorado. Over 500 yards passing, four touchdowns, 38 of 47 guys. And just a few things that I loved about it, he was just always in control. He never put his offense in a bad play. He made great decisions. And when they had to make a play at the end of the game, he was cool, calm, and collected multiple third downs, Brady. This kid was impressive. He had a bunch of weapons around him, but it takes a leader to get those Ws. He was, uh, that's one of the best performances I've ever seen. Ooh. He was phenomenal. So poised, so calm. Rob's giving his Heisman vote to Travis <laughs> Hunter. I, I got to split mine. Both of those guys. Have Travis Hunter, yes. have Shadur Sanders. Both these guys now are in the Heisman race. Well, it's also impressive, Dion, the coaching staff, the job they did defensively, but more importantly, offensively, spreading the ball around, always giving Shadur Sanders an option to go to, not putting him in a, in a bad spot either. So credit the coaching staff as well. Hey, I got an idea. Let's go to Boulder next week. Yeah, let's, go. let's go. Hey, Wait, Deion's been coming. saying all season, we, we come and guess what? <laughs> we coming too, coach. We're heading to Boulder. We'll see you next yes, Saturday. Sir. That's right. You see more of Coach Prime, Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter next week. Big new kickoff heads to Boulder as Colorado hosts Nebraska. Coach Prime's own debut uh, cover starts at 10 a.m. Eastern next Saturday on Fox. Number two, Michigan in action, taking on East Carolina. No Coach Harbaugh for them. Free Harbaugh. School and pole suspension, first three games <laughs> of the season. Team showing the solidarity right there, raising the fours. Jesse Minter taking over. 
on the sidelines, J.J. McCarthy taking over behind center doing his thing. Love that execution. Pinpoint throw, great extended grab. McCarthy, third touchdown of the game. Michigan wins it 30-3. Ohio State also won the day. UT Martin, number one Georgia. Meanwhile, Carson Beck taking over for Stetson Bennett. Beck to Mackay Muse, and uh, yeah, he's got some moves, Muse does. Yeah, Muse right there out the gate. 54-yard touchdown. You know the defense is going to show up. 48-7, Georgia Rose. Rice, number 11, Texas. What's, what's that question we've been here? Is what? Is who? Is, who? is Are Texas they back? Back. <laughs> yeah, you know, B. John Robinson didn't come back. He's uh, now in the NFL, but uh, Texas still has a lot of firepower on offense. Showed it in the second half. Texas started off slow, but by the end of the game, they had things figured out. Keep in mind, huge matchup next week versus Alabama. Maybe mm. they were looking ahead, but they made sure to get this one done. Uh, Ewers, uh, Donnie Mitchell right there. Texas up 23-3, and Ewers, Jatavion Sanders. Down the middle, he takes it all the way 44 yards. Texas rolls 37 to 10. The defense really stepped up as well in this one. Uh, how about your reigning Heisman Trophy winner? Kayla Williams in USC hosting Nevada. Second quarter, USC up 27. Williams scrambling. Watch this, coach. Yeah. This is my favorite player and favorite offense right now to watch. Something special is always going to happen. Yeah, a lot of people will join you in that sentiment right there. 66 14. Kayla Williams and the boys get the job done. Williams, 18 to 24, 319 yards, didn't play in the fourth quarter. Boys of State, number 10 in Washington, coach. The Coach Peterson Bowl, in a sense, Michael Pennish Jr. Oh, yeah, he's a Heisman candidate as well. 450 passing yards, five touchdowns for Pennish Jr. Huskies win it 56 to 19. You saw week one so far. I know it's early. It's early. <laughs> early college oh. football predictions. Right now, you got to stick to it the rest of the season. You asking me? Yes. You're not, oh boy. Acho, Acho, go. Acho. Coach, let me take some heat off yeah, here. Let yeah, me take some you. heat off here and go first. <laughs> let me take some notes. I got Georgia. Obviously, we know mm. why. Georgia's talent pool, it is utterly ridiculous. They've won the last two national championships. Outside of Georgia, then I have Michigan. Mm. I think Michigan at the quarterback position, they're more stable than the other quarterbacks in the Big Ten. Then it starts to get a little dicey for me, but USC, Lincoln mm. Riley, he's going to take okay. that program to that next step. And then finally, rounding out the top four, it's got to be LSU. It's got to be LSU to be. for this reason. Wow. When you think about the week one matchups mm. over the last two years mm -hmm. between top 10 teams, the winner of that top 10 week one matchup makes it to the playoffs. The last two I seasons. fervently believe mm -hmm. that LSU is going to beat Florida State. Mm. After they beat Florida State, coach, they have a little bit more grace to air later in the season because they already have a win versus a top 10 opponent. Oh, they still got old Miss. They got old that, and Alabama on that schedule Don't as well. Be tough. Very similar list. I'm doing this under protest, <laughs> but here I go. I like Georgia. They only got 13 starters back, but they recruit like to the Dallas Cowboys. I think the biggest, the biggest person they have to replace is Todd Munkin, the OC, no doubt. that mm. went to the NFL. Got Michigan. Harbaugh has them rolling so good that they don't even need him the first three games mm. of the year, and mm. they're going to still roll. I like your the LSU prediction. I think LSU is going to win tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. If I didn't think that, I'd probably take Florida State, but I think Florida State is going to lose. So I got the sleepers, Clemson coming Clemson, out of the like All right. I like it. I like seasons. it. I like it. I like it. And then my last team is the same one you SC. mentioned is SC. With that offense, I know there's questions on the defense, but when you're scoring 60 points a game and you got that magician back there at quarterback, <laughs> I got to see somebody <laughs> knock them off. All right, real quick, who wins it all now? Who wins it all? <clears throat> it's Georgia until proven otherwise. Michigan. Michigan. I agree with you. Their year. I agree with you. Michigan. If Georgia wins it the first time, a three-peat champion since the 30s. Second half between Sam Houston and BYU is coming up. Enjoy your game, everybody. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It's a huge week one doubleheader on Fox. First, Christian McCaffrey and the Niners take on Kenny Pickett and the Steelers. Then in America's Game of the Week, Jordan Love leads a new era of Packers football against Justin Fields and the Bears. Touchdown! It's a huge week one doubleheader next Sunday on Fox. Operation Wonder Park is a go! There's nothing more powerful than imagination. Honey, have you seen my cell phone? But don't just imagine. My park came to life? Ooh, a plot twist. 
Use STEM to build, create, she did it. and change the world. Who's with me? I'm more of a two feet on the ground kind of guy. No, 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 no. Hurt tomorrow. If she can stem, so can you. Find out more at She Can Stem. Well, there was a touchdown early in this game, the first series for BYU, but that's been it since. 7 0 over Sam Houston. Second half next. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Cloud. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Eh, uh, senor mayor, with this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you? Eh, uh, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But these ones round. No, I don't know. Maybe a red bull will help you see it from a different slant. <laughs> yes, I got it. We'll build it like this. Perfecto! Red Bull gives you wings. Why is Aaron happy? Well, just days ago, his old wheels gave out. But he knew Carvana had his back. That's because Carvana had thousands of cars under $20,000. And with the new Co-Signer option, Aaron's folks were able to help him out with a new ride. No way. Yes way. With thousands of cars under $20,000 and our co-signer option, we'll drive you happy at Carvana. the pace that both teams would uh, like to be at offensively. Getting ready for the second half, BYU will have the ball to start. What, what's the biggest thing that needs to change for the Cougars? Well, they've just been out of rhythm this entire game. They came out, they did a great job with Aiden Robbins, leaning a little bit on Sam Houston, who's got a really celebrated good defense from the FCS level, stepping into FBS. Slovis was sharp, moving the ball around and distributing it to different receivers, as is something he does very well over the years and it looked like it was going to be that type of game where Sam Houston was going to try to keep up with BYU's ability you see Keaton Slovis first ever after all the games he's played in rushing touchdown <laughs> surprised and then you see the numbers after that the first drive was 50 yards and a touchdown since then and Sam Houston didn't move the ball at all continued to punt it only 66 yards for Kalani Sataki's crew definitely something to be concerned about or you could ask yourself the question, is this Sam Houston defense that good with these great linebackers coming out of FCS for Coach Keeler? Perhaps that's the case. Looks like it. Overall, they returned 15 starters. An experienced, deep roster. 42 players listed as juniors, seniors, or graduates. A lot of underclassmen have experience as well. Tough to gauge what their season was like last year. Just nine games, five and four record. But so far, their defense has come to play. Parker Kingston takes this return out to the 20-yard line. Special teams tackle from Trey Fields. You know, the game started. Sam Houston got the ball, got stopped. BYU scored a touchdown. Kind of thought you knew what you'd be in for. And then everything just stopped offensively for BYU. Sam Houston able to put together a couple first downs here and there, showing a little bit of life on offense. But the two biggest stars of the first half, BYU defense and Sam Houston's defense. Well, we called all the names that we thought would be impact players for the Bearcats. Trevor Williams, Meatball Smith, Javon Leon. And we called the name of Kevin Gaithier. Yes. Time out. But BYU, BYU can't even get organized on start. the first Time play the from half. scrimmage in the second half, and they have to burn a timeout. They, they weren't set with 10 seconds left on the play clock. They were still coming out to the line of scrimmage. They they were confused somehow, and 
you see how upset Kalani Sataki is. You started to see the frustration in the first half, and, and now unable to get out on the field and run a play. This is just logistical game management type of stuff that the Cougs are struggling with right now. And their new quarterback, who's got a lot of polish and maturity, Keaton Slovis, just not coming together right now on the field for all these guys. Well, the one thing Slovis said he was looking for on the first day of camp from his team was consistency. Not so in the first half of this game. Nice cut back from Robbins, but only gets a yard and a great tackle from Gaithier right off the hop in the second half. Yeah, Gaithier up top and Trevor Williams down below. Gaithier's a guy who came into his own last year when a lot of these linebackers took a red shirt. There he is. Yeah. Whack defensive player of the year. Swarming to the ball and making a play on a big back two on one and creating a second down and long. These guys are playing great right now. These Sam Houston linebackers. Second down, pressure coming. Slovis delivers on time into a tight window. It's only going to wind up being a, about a four or five yard pickup for Chase Roberts. And again, Gaithier's there. Defensive leader guy out of Waco, Texas. Become a veteran last year. Kind of one of those guys that was sort of left out there with the live bullets while many of their teammates, up to 20, were redshirting. Gained a lot of experience and now. Got more of a veteran presence out there. And here's another third down for BYU. Third down and five. Slovis to throw. Crossing pattern complete. Across the 30 and a first down for the Cougars. Flag on the play. After a gain of nine. Easy throw and catch to Chase Roberts. Will it be negated? Body language says maybe yes. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Number 76, offense. Half the distance to the goal. It's third down. That's the Oklahoma State transfer, Caleb ETN. Yeah, they called uh, ETN on it, but oh, I think it's 78. Yeah, yeah it's the, it's the big that draft foul pick. Was on number 78. Kingsley Suamata Ia. Best looking offensive lineman in the country to many people and a guy that's really fast, a super athlete. Hard to just tell his story now after he gets yeah. a penalty, but this is really one of the most exciting offensive line prospects in college football in 2023. Catches the flag there. Third down and 20. As Rex turns up field. Escape the initial tackle. He's going to get some of the penalty yards back, but not nearly enough and the Cougars will have to punt on their first series of the half and, and they hurt themselves there with the hands to the face they, they had a first down and they weren't able and look at you see Keaton Slovis now gathering the offense and this is the leadership you bring a guy like this in for talking to the guys and telling them we have to show ourselves better in this game we might mess around and end up losing Fifth straight BYU punt. Ah, maybe it won't be. Rico is going to pay the price. Tough to tell what BYU is trying to do there. It looked like they called a fake. Yeah. Uh, because Rico got the ball and kind of did a counter step and then took it to the left. I mean, is this, is this a design play? Yes, that's a design fake. Wow. You see Cravens and those guys coming in, but it got blown up early. The defensive lineman, Batty and Cravens, could not get on those blocks. And Rico, just not a lot of speed to the point of attack either. And not a good looking fake and oh. not a good looking series for the Cougars. And you just handed Sam Houston their best field position by far tonight. That's a head scratcher. On first down, Shoemaker hit as he throws to the end zone. Out of the way, incomplete. Tight coverage from Camden Garrett, and a flag comes in. And it might have been from that contact at the goal line. That's Ife Adeyi, I believe, up against Garrett. 
And Tyler Batty with a very big hit on Shoemaker as he was delivering the ball. Ref's telling Kalani Sataki's got to get on the field. He, he, off the field, he's very upset right now. Pass interference. Defense number seven. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Gaithier's been very, excuse me, Garrett's been very physical. And he does get there early on a day. -y. Day he kind of had to stop to come back to that ball because of the hit that Batty put on the quarterback. And look at where Sam Houston is now. First and goal at the five. Shoemaker the handoff. Urbacic stumbled behind the line and is going to be enveloped there. Max Tooley, one of the hands in on the tackle for a loss of one. You know, we were talking about this first half. Sam Houston hanging around, hanging around. Their patience. Maybe about to pay off. They're knocking on the door. Wow, what a cut by Herbacek there to get away from the initial rush. Ben and Bywater really flashed in the backfield, and Herbacek, if he moved to get out of it. Second down and goal. Shoemaker pumps, throws, intercepted. Jacob Robinson. And the best opportunity for the Bearcats tonight evaporates into the thin air of Provo. Fifth career interception for the Utah State transfer. BYU will take over. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not not like like the good, good old days. days. Hmm, stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. Go. This or that. This or that. You can do this. Bring you Angie back. You can do this. Bring you Angie back. You can do this because everywhere is that. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Get started today at Angie.com. Get some juice back into the stadium. Jacob Robinson read this from the get-go. Sees that it's a tandem route. Comes over the top of it and uses his athleticism to get in front of a Adeyi. High points the ball and reads the quarterback. Beautifully done. So the best chance of the night for Sam Houston results in the game's first turnover. But just as BYU gets the ball back, it's more of the same from the Sam Houston defense. Swarming and coming up with a tackle for loss. I mean, Actually going to give him a one-yard gain in the end. BYU's tried everything, Alex. Yep. I mean, they've tried to get the ball to Isaac Rex and have him bully guys one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that hasn't worked. You see Robinson there with the big pick. Uh, they've tried to get the ball to Aiden Robbins out there on the edge. That hasn't worked. Robinson has given him a great opportunity again. Even just with momentum, right? Yeah, and then the stadium is excited. They just can't get it going. Now there's a first down with Darius Lassiter getting his first touch of the game. 11-yard pickup. Plenty of cushion there, and this is what the first drive looked like. Keaton Slovis kind of sitting back there in a rocking chair and distributing the ball. Thought it was going to be doing a lot more of that. We'll see if they can get their momentum going. Remember, he had that talk with the offense. Yeah. He'd say the first touch of the half is Slovis dives ahead awkwardly and took a hard shot from Caleb Weaver. And immediately a flag comes in. And it looked like Weaver got the worst of it. Slovis was giving himself up and 
Weaver just came in at full speed. Let's see what, what Slovis was doing. It looked Holding. like he was going to slide, Offense. and then he, he kind of went head first. Ten yard penalty. So that's not Replay the call. It's down. a call as a hold on Matava Tase. The tight end transfer from Southern Utah. Kind of a half slide there yeah. from Slovis, which made it awkward for Weaver, who didn't really know if he was giving himself up. Here's the hold, 99 right here. That's interesting, though. Remember that rule change not too long ago, where even if you make a, a an attempt, like if you're going to show it, a little, a little surprised. So after the penalty, first down and 20. As Slovis delivers underneath to Lassiter. He gets 9 or 10. Basically all the penalty yardage back. Lassiter's been pretty productive, especially on this drive thus far. Eastern Michigan transfer to bring some depth to the wide receiving core. Still just one touch for Keanu Hill. He's the guy with the jumping ability that really created a lot of that depth. We haven't seen much from him. Cody Epps is out in this one. Remember, Epps missed the second half of last season with injury. Quick hitter. And Fakahua. This will bring up third down after a gain of five. Donovan Atkins on the tackle. Now you wouldn't say this offense is anemic right now, but they just they just don't have that punch. It just you don't feel them coming off the line of scrimmage and really getting a lot of push. They're not leaning with the running backs and attacking the defense. Uh, it's been a lot of short passes. Uh, the aggression has come a lot from from Sam Houston. BYU two for nine on third down tonight. On third down, Slovis taking a deep shot down the middle. It is. Is incomplete off the hands of Keelan Marion. Davian Armstead was there in coverage. Late flag comes in. Holding offense number 78. That penalty is refused. It's fourth down. Another penalty on the big guy, Kingsley Suamataia. That's his second of the half. Here's a replay. A little bit too much air under that ball. Almost picked off by Armstead. Slovis was hit as he got rid of it. And the inspired speech on the sideline was good for a first down, maybe, but that was about it. Already three penalties this half on BYU. Not including the one that was just declined. Punt fielded at the nine. Couple flags come in for an illegal block, presumably. Ten yard return after a 44 yard punt. Well, you saw it, Alex. A pretty clear block in the back there. And you expect this kind of sloppiness in a first game. BYU bringing in all these different transfers. I guess it stands to reason, but that doesn't make it any return. easier for that guy. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 20. That penalty is half the distance to the goal. Time out on the field. So Sam Houston, who had it at the five-yard line on the other end, going to start close to it on their end. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ Fall Blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Uh, Senor Mayor, with this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you... Yeah, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But these ones round. No, I don't know. Maybe a Red Bull will help you see it from a different slant. Yes, I got it!
We'll build it like this. Perfecto! Red Bull gives you wings. There's DNA. Then there's heavy duty DNA. H DNA. It's what every GMC Sierra HD driver is born with and it's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD with the pulling power to prove it. The new 2024 GMC Sierra HD. Tow hitches of the world, prepare for glory. All right, is this the most firepower we're gonna see all night? Wow, I hope not, but look at Cosmo. Oh, getting through that ring of fire. You know, those arms are pretty flammable. I mean, they're, they're, those are hairy Sasquatch-like arms. And look at how they don't catch fire because he's coming through so quickly like a missile. Almost caught himself on the carpet. It's hazardous. What are the goggles protecting? I mean, that's probably where right? the like, guy inside how does he see? What breathes. <laughs> I would imagine you don't want to be breathing that stuff. Sam Houston starting again. The shadow of their own end zone, their own five-yard line. We'll get a couple of yards here, maybe just one in the end, depending on how they mark it. Jack Sherrard involved there. And Tyler Batty on the tackle. Second down. Shoemaker hands it off, and it's Gentry. But only a couple of yards for him, and it's third down. Trying to give him a little bit of a zone read look with the threat of Shoemaker also running the ball. Gentry takes the ball, creating a third and seven, and Sam Houston's found a way to get some first downs in this game. And if you're a Sam Houston fan, you have to be pretty upset about the way the last drive ended that interception because that was a great chance to tie this game up. Here's the problem. They were 0 for 7 on third down. Here comes a pass rush. Shoemaker delivers on target. Noah Smith and the first time that the Bearcats have converted on third down tonight. A big pickup of 25. Yeah, that gets the Bearcats out of Dodge. Jay Hill dialed up a blitz there, and standing right in the face of it was Shoemaker. Stepped into it and delivered one of his better throws of the night. And the blitz did not get home. Max Tooley, a couple yards away when that ball was delivered. And like you said, they're out from the shadow of the end zone now. Low snap, handoff, Gentry escapes the tackle up the sideline. I double check where he stepped out here. And all of a sudden, just one play, it seems like the Bearcats have a rhythm. Look at the exchange here, all the way down, and a great job by Shoemaker to get all the way down, pick up the ball, and then get it into the bread basket of Gentry so he could create really well done with the footwork because that is very difficult to do if the snap is bad. Positive play could have been a disaster. Yeah. Could have been a bigger play. Jeffrey stepped out at the 37, a gain of five. Shoemaker throws this one away. Third down. Trying to get it to Shane Johnson, who's had a couple of catches in this game, the first half. Here's another third down situation. Last time it was a blitz, and Shoemaker made a heck of a throw. There's Jay Hill working with this new defense. Trying to instill his system. Why you only rushing three? Shoemaker steps up, has room, lowers his shoulder, and gets to about the 44 yard line. That's good enough for a first down. Shoemaker starting to see the field a lot better. Read the blitz, knew somebody would be open downfield, delivered it. This time, as you said, Alex, the Cougs defense drops eight. He makes a quick decision, takes a hit, and gets the first down. Sam Houston, two first downs, coming out of the shadow of the end zone, starting to threaten a bit. A drive that started at their own five-yard line. 
Off the play fake, Shoemaker rolling to his right, heaves it downfield, nobody there, and throws it away. Good job getting rid of it. Good job by the O-line avoiding holding penalties when they were beaten. And Tyler Batty really bearing down, and Shoemaker felt it and got rid of it. I'll tell you what, overall for Sam Houston, great job avoiding penalties. Just three penalties for 23 yards for the Bearcats. And uh, Coach Keeler talked about that, playing a clean game and having a chance to win. And, and thus far, you could say that's exactly what's happened. Only three penalties. BYU anything but clean. They need a bath. Shoemaker. A cut to his left, but that hole quickly evaporated. John Nelson steps up for the tackle, and it's third down. Yeah, read well by Nelson. Vakpachan, the captain, came in and cleaned up the play as well. And BYU, after... Giving up a couple of first down space and another third down. This one longer than the previous two that were converted by Sam Houston on this drive. Shoemaker drops back to pass. Throws near side. Is it picked off? It is. Robinson has his second tonight. Well, Shoemaker's going to be seeing Jacob Robinson in his nightmares. What a play on the edge. Trying to talk it over with Shane Johnson, figure out what happened, but right on the sideline, working his feet. Huge play for BYU's defense. The second time Jacob Robinson, the junior, has snatched that rock. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back! Cloud. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like, like the good old days. days. Hmm, stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. Take on the day. With Taltz, up to 90% of patients saw a significant improvement of their psoriasis plaques. Some even saw 100% clear skin. And for those with psoriatic arthritis, Taltz reduces joint pain and stiffness. Don't use if you are allergic to Taltz. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. Increased risk of infections and lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about infections, symptoms, or if inflammatory bowel disease symptoms develop worsen or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Ask your doctor about Taltz. Well, while we were away, this play was under review. Jacob Robinson oh so close to his second interception, but we think this is coming back. Why? Why would you say that? Let's see what happens. Oh, went off the ground. <laughs> it looks like he bounced off the ground to himself. Heck of an effort. Oh, for sure. And the second really athletic play we've seen, at least the second, from Jacob Robinson. And here's the call. After further review, the ruling on the field stands his call. It's first down, BYU. Wow, looked to me like that was coming back. I guess they think it bounced off his hands somehow. Well, all right. Give credit where credit's due. They must not have thought the evidence was conclusive enough. I, I guess not. No, I, I, we were watching the replays during the uh, the break. And Look at Coach Keeler's. You know what? Uh, he has a point, I think. I mean, they just showed it up on the big board here. Every, everybody's seen it. Yeah, the, the look we had of the ball, it, maybe it was just, just a touch out of frame which is what the officials are explaining to Keeler. Dean Blandino is here to help us. Dean, what's cracking? How are you? 
I'm good. I'm good. Interesting situation here. The only thing I can think of is our shot. The ball was just out of the frame. So we can assume it hit the ground. I think it hit the ground, but it has to be definitive. This is the shot here. We just lose the football at the bottom of the frame and not sure what they're showing in the stadium. But obviously, coach is pointing up to the, uh, the video board. And if they have a different angle, replay can't use in-stadium cameras. It has to be the broadcast angles that they use to make those decisions. Oh, interesting. That's a good distinction. So the young man gets his pick and the stat stands. Appreciate it, Dean. Thanks for staying up late with us. Oh, he's been putting in work yeah. and he looks fresh like he just got out of the shower. That's a long day. What a star. Been there since big noon. I haven't seen professionalism like that since Dean Martin. Just great. Really? It's been that long. So Casey Keeler is going to continue to plead his case, and you can understand why, because instead of BYU taking over at the 45, Sam Houston would have an opportunity to punt the ball, pin BYU, give them a longer field. But they've been playing great defense, and Coach yeah. Keeler now is, is more beyond the, hey, we're, we're showing ourselves pretty well here in our first FBS game. He, he smells victory. He smells some blood in the water and some frustration. And obviously, every yard you can get, you want it. Tough situation there with the ball just out of frame. So BYU takes over at their own 45. And turning the corner is L.J. Martin, who gets a touch. The freshman from El Paso, Texas. One of the few freshmen outside of Jackson Bowers at the running back position to get much mention in fall camp. Rave reviews from the coaching staff. Brings up second and four. Second down and four after a gain of six. Here he is again, crossing midfield. And yeah, they're trying to bring in the young running back to provide a spark. And the one thing they said about L.J. Martin, who was a big get for them, was that he had one of the best camps they've ever seen from a freshman. Like you said, Alex, he's long and impressive. And the one thing they thought is that he was physically ready. And he looks like it, too. You see those long legs? Three carries in a row here. Yep. And he's got a first down and a whole lot more. And they were loving how explosive those legs were when they first saw him in fall camp. Well, they've given Aiden Robbins carry so far and Deion Smith, and none of them have taken over like this the way the young freshman has early in this game. Three carries in a row. Will they give it to him four times? That's a lot for a young guy now. Play action, I would say. Nope. Yeah, that's four in a row. Nice tackle made. Gain of a couple of yards. A tackle from Bryson Hayes. He's had to have shown his ability to carry the ball eight, nine times in a row in a live scrimmage in practice for Kalani Sataki to do that in this game. And it just goes to show you how desperately BYU needs a spark turning to a player who's Never put on their uniform before in a live game. L.J. Martin, a great freshman back, still in there, dot in the eye. You just so rarely see a true freshman come in for BYU and, and get reps like this right off the bat. Slovis taking a shot down the sideline. End zone broken up. The Carrick Hobbs. In coverage. Good job by Hobbs. I was a play late on the play action. They get the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Well, Hobbs has his arm right on the sleeve and the collar of Lassiter. No call, though. Kind of got his head around a little bit. One-on-one -on -one matchup and kind of a 50-50 ball. No flag. Another third and long for BYU. Slovis directing traffic at the line. BYU 3 for 10 tonight on third down. Slovis perfectly weighted ball to Isaac Rex as he escaped the blitz. But Sam Houston's defense again coming up with the goods. Matthew Arabisala with the tackle on Rex to bring up fourth down. Great pursuit there, too, forcing the fourth down. And for the first time, we're going to see Will Farron attempt a field goal. 
because of the running of L.J. Martin. The pick that was not overturned, put him in good field position. Yep. Some good runs by L.J. Martin and a chance to make it a two-score game. So the transfer from Boise State. Kickoff specialist at Boise, and this is blocked. Scooped up by Sam Houston. Taken back the other way. This could be pay dirt, and it is just shy of the goal line. DeCarrick Hobbs scooped it up, took it back. There is a flag on the play. If you can't get it done offensively, do it in special teams. You see the frustration on the Bearcat sideline. I think that the block will stand. The block of the field goal attempt will stand. Probably going to be a hold on the return while Hobbs was trying to bring it back as they work out the flag here. Will Farron was involved in a spirited battle to earn the starting place kicker role in camp. After the block kick, holding number 14. Excuse me, holding number 14. That penalty is declined. Offside, defense number Whoa. two. Oh, wow. Five penalty. It's fourth down. So fourth down again. Offside, yeah. That's a day, -y, and that's why he got it. Yep. Uh, because he was offside. So that's a good call. Everybody runs very far and feels very emotional about <laughs> an offside penalty. And the offense is coming out to try to get the one yard, Alex. That would explain the frustration seen right away. So, fourth and one. Slovis in the offense and try to get it. 0 for 2 on fourth down. Give it to the freshman to move the sticks. L.J. Martin. Well, there's just a way that this young guy is attacking the line of scrimmage, obviously, that Kalani Sataki likes. Gets the ball there. Pretty good hole and a nice push that he gets. But just keeps those legs turning, keeps churning. Tase with a nice block at the tight end position there. They leave the freshman in. This is the best their offense has looked since the open. Five carries now. It's one shy of Aiden Robbins for the most for BYU tonight. To the outside and Chase Roberts right at the stick. As we enter the final minute of the third quarter, it's a first down for BYU. And you can see with Aaron Roderick's offense, once you get that run going a little bit, the cushions are more there. And you can get the ball out to the edges. That time, Roberts with a nice catch. Sam Houston calls a timeout. What a turn of events. From an interception that was upheld, a block kick that didn't stay. BYU knocking on the door. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Eh, senor mayor, with this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you... Yeah, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But these ones round. No, I don't know. Maybe a Red Bull will help you see it from a different slant. Yes, I got it. We'll build it like this. 
Perfecto. Red Bull gives you wings. So yeah, USAA, they always have my back. USAA? You were in the military? Oh no, I wasn't, but my grandpa was. He joined USAA, passed membership to my mom, then to me. There's other ways to get in? Yeah, my neighbor Ron, he's in, because his wife served. Even little Luna, when she's born, her dad served. So all this time I could have had USAA insurance. And banking. Where's my phone? <laughs> <laughs> Over there. USAA, for the military community and their families. 30th anniversary season of Fox Sports and the NFL regular season kicks off September 10th on Fox with a huge doubleheader. First, Christian McCaffrey and the 49ers take on the Steelers or other regional action. Then America's Game of the Week, Jordan Love leading the Packers against Justin Fields and the Bears. September 10th on Fox. L.J. Martin tackled just shy of the goal line. BYU trying to punch this in in the final minute of the third quarter. Uh, the youth has come to the rescue. Slovis trying to surge ahead, get a push. Reaching out for the goal line, he will not get there. Wow, before the play is whistled dead. Martin was really at a handful of Slovis trying to push him into the end zone. <laughs> I mean, he really gave an effort. They said that his forward progress was stopped before he fell into the end zone, despite the effort. And that'll of LJ take Martin. us. That'll take us to the end of the third quarter. A little bit of a cliffhanger. Will Martin get the touch that puts BYU into the end zone? Can Sam Houston come up with a stop to keep it a one-score game? We head to the fourth after dark next. reached peak fall the dq fall blizzard menu snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie they're back plaid cardigan Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots they did it too much fall nah peak fall achieved dq happy tastes good hey, senior mayor with this tower i will make pizza world famous and you yeah you can see towers like this in rome in venice in florence but these ones round no i don't know maybe a red bull will help you see it from a different slant yes i got it we'll build it like this perfecto red bull gives you wings fly to paris see the tower smaller than you expected wait in line see the mona lisa Smaller than you expected. Check in. See your room. Bigger than you expected. Join one key where gold and platinum members get travel perks like room upgrades. Getting psyched for the fourth quarter in Provo. What a show they put on here. I'd say Cosmo has been the show tonight for the most part. I feel like I met Metallica. Look at this. Look at this. BYU. Near feet away. Oh, they lay it on thick here. Lavelle Edwards Stadium. They know how to get geeked up. Finally seeing some life from their offense with this freshman back. And Slovis wants a little bit of quiet here as they set things up. Third down and goal. Looking to punch this in. They surge ahead. Does the ball cross the plane? What's the signal? Really waiting on that signal. Touchdown! Now the last play they tried to use the freshman LJ Martin as the pusher. And it didn't quite work out that well. That time they used Mason Fakahua, a lot bigger of a guy, 240 pounds, to carry Slovis in. And they do it. BYU restoring a little bit of order as far as they're concerned in this game. It's a well-executed drive. All started with the interception that was upheld after review. The block kick that came back after the offside, and they punch it in with an extra point here to double the lead. Yeah, Armstead blocked the, the kick, but he was offside. And the spark provided by the freshman back, L.J. Martin. That was his drive. Yeah. 14 nothing. Flag comes in here on the extra point. With 
And certainly a lot of frustration at every stoppage. Casey Keeler has been in the ear of whoever in stripes will listen to him. Yeah, I thought that interception call Running should have been overturned. Kicker. Defense number two. That penalty is declined. Kickoff. Got Armstead again. Really aggressive. That time runs into the kicker. Keaton Slois engineering the drive. This block that came back, a crucial part of it. And eventually they get the score out of it. BYU up 14 zip. No one can take better care of your child than you can. But when they start getting into everything, you may need a little help. So Duracell created the only lithium coin batteries with a non-toxic bitter coating to help discourage swallowing. Making safety simple and giving you more peace of mind. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ Fall Blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not like like the good, good old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. 14-0, BYU. I like how you put it, P. Some order restored to this game. BYU scored on the opening drive, and Keaton Slovis, who hadn't scored a rushing touchdown his entire career, at Pitt or USC. Now he's Brad Tarkenton. Running all over the place <laughs> and scoring. Vladi Sitaki still a lot to clean up offensively for the Cougs in this game, and Sam Houston has been tough. They have not backed down, but offensively, they just have not had the firepower to really compete, to score. So far in this game, the closest they got, a big interception, turned things around. Yeah, just 121 yards total offense for Sam Houston. Eight first downs, most of them coming in that bunch. Their most recent drive, this kick lands out of bounds. So good starting field position here for Sam Houston. And another mistake by the coup. Yeah, this will be their ninth penalty. That's been accepted. Early moments, fourth quarter. The FBS debut for the Sam Houston Bearcats, now members of Conference USA. 38 years in Division I AA FCS, 10 conference championships, a national championship in the 2020-21 spring season. But Keegan Shoemaker, he's trying to get something going, but two interceptions his last five pass attempts. And they're going to need him to complete some balls and be really sharp if they're going to compete down the stretch here. Noah Smith tumbles ahead after a five-yard game. Trying to get the receivers involved in other ways than just throwing it to him. Noah Smith, one of those red shirts from 22. Shoemaker pumps and hits his man in their botchik, but he's tackled immediately by Jacob Robinson. What a night he's put together with the two picks. And an open field tackle here to set up third and five. Yeah, showing a lot of different tools in his game. Open field tackle is right, making a nice close on a nifty back in Herbacek. And forcing another third down. Can Sam Houston stay on the field? If they can't, it's a chance for BYU to open the game up, getting the ball back.
Shoemaker taking a look down the sideline. A lot of hand fighting between Robinson and Odeyi. An incomplete pass. And it'll be a three and out. One-on-one -on -one matchup there, but Robinson, pretty long guy. Five foot eleven. And very active with his hands. Gets up there and swipes it away. They're really letting him play on the edges tonight. Keeping the flags in the pockets. Jason, rather, Jaden Cardell with the punt. And a fair catch signaled at the 21 yard line by Hobbs Nyberg. Well, BYU, part of the story of the great realignment that's happened over the last year or so. One of four teams headed to the Big 12 in 2023. More to come for the Big 12 next year with Colorado, Arizona, ASU, and Utah. The Big 12 eating several of the Pac-12 programs. ACC just voted to accept Cal and Stanford in addition to SMU, which is basically going there for free. This all started after Oklahoma and Texas left the Big 12. Big 12 for the SEC. Yeah, seismic movement in, in college football. You know, you wonder how people were freaking out decades ago when the Southwest Conference went away. <laughs> this is this is really unheard of. Exciting, but some of it uh, disconcerting, no doubt about it. When you're a big Pac-12 guy, I mean, it, not only your playing days at USC, but you've covered that league forever, P, and it's it's just weird, isn't it? Tough to see it go away, but it's it's obvious when something is not managed properly that, that in any business, it gets broken apart. And that's what we've seen in this situation. If there's one constant about big-time college athletics, realignment has always been there. Yeah, change is the constant in college football. I mean, half the way we used to play when I was playing is illegal now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you have to be adaptable to change or this is not a sport for you. But I'm very interested to see what happens to Oregon State and Washington State because uh, they don't deserve to be left out in the cold uh, like so many have predicted that they are. And beyond that, all the uh, non-football sports at these programs that are now going to incur a lot of travel going forward. BYU, this is actually a benefit to them. We've got a lot more teams nearby. Another great run for LJ Martin. And he might be the breakout star of this game in the second half. Uh, no doubt about it, Alex. He's provided the, the, the entire offense <laughs> thus far in the second half. At least the run established through him carrying the ball. And you see him just storming down the field. That is a big guy with big legs and not an easy guy to tackle. And he's been by far the best offensive weapon we've seen for the Cougs tonight. And they're leaving him in the game, and it seems like he's got the win to handle. Mm. Six foot two, 205 pounds from El Paso, Texas. Martin, another carry. Oof. Lowers the shoulder, takes a physical hit in the process but keeps on ticking. Kennetio High School for L.J. Martin. And again, we kind of expected that he would see a few touches. I don't know about this, though. Well, it wouldn't have happened if he wasn't successful. Yeah. Slovis throws this one away. Third down. I mean, the L.J. Martin thing is, is pretty interesting watching it develop in the moment because what you're watching is a guy take over a position as a true freshman and how is he in blitz pickup how good is he catching the ball out of the backfield as far as recognizing all the plays and play changes as a true freshman that's hard to know but this is the guy aiden robbins everybody thought was going to be the bell cow tonight lj martin has started to yank at his chain robbins twisted down Number three, at midfield I mean, two plays ago, L.J. Martin took a vicious hit mm. uh, and just leaned forward and ended up falling on top of the guy. I mean, he looks like he can really take a, a licking and keep going. They're going to go for it here. Oh, no, bring it in the punt. I thought for a moment they, uh, they might consider it All at midfield with a 14-point lead. You can put this game to bed. 
But they're going to get the ball back to Sam Houston. Not that the Bearcats have proven they can do anything just yet. This will wind up in the end zone. So a short net on the punt. A touchback. And Sam Houston will try to break the goose egg. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. Oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Your paint is really bad. What? I said, best coffee I've ever had. Should've used Bear. Sorry, sign where? No, I said, should've used Bear. Today, let's paint. Right now, get America's most trusted paint brand at a new low price. Bear, only at the Home Depot. Eh, Senor Mayor, with this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you! Yeah, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But these ones round. No, I don't know. Maybe a Red Bull will help you see it from a different slant. Yes, I got it. We'll build it like this. Perfetto! Red Bull gives you wings. Oh, how much you love high school football in Southern California. San Clemente High School, four of the coaches there are BYU football alums, not just any alum, like Dennis Pitta. He's big-time oh, star. Tiger. And the Rex family, Isaac Rex, big-time star. His dad, Byron, former player at BYU. San Clemente High School, special place. One town, one team is their mantra, the Tritons. Jaime Ortiz led, and they're happy to see Isaac Rex back and healthy out there. Pitta looks good. All those guys in those sunglasses must have been bright. <laughs> it is sunny in Southern California quite often. Not, to, not today, I heard, but quite often. 22-yard pickup here for the Bearcats. Now, this is, it feels 10 minutes to go. I mean, this, is, this is go time now if you want to have any chance of winning this game, right? And uh, let's say Sam Houston keeps that going. You wonder about the decision to punt there on fourth and two when you were starting to get a good push and the young back was starting to help you out a little bit. Nice first down game for Shoemaker. Send Smith in motion. A little reverse. Smith is going to throw down the sideline. Got his man. A day. Flag on the play. Will this stand? Really beautifully executed, or was it? Mm, 34 yards if it holds up. Ineligible receiver downfield on a pass play. Number 73. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. Mark Kendrick Beal. Down the field, caught in no man's land there, and that's what draws the flag on what was a big play for the Bearcats offensively, and obviously one of the big bullets in their arsenal that they just fired off and didn't get anything out of, even though it was executed pretty well. For a team that's been so disciplined all night. Pressure comes, and a big hit delivered. On the outside, Eddie Hecker, former FCS All-American at Weber State, blows up the play, second down. Jay Hill talked to us about physicality, and we've seen more of it from this BYU defense tonight than last year, especially from these corners. Jacob Robinson, Hecker, guys coming up making big hits on the edge. They allowed 29 points per game last year, the most since 2001, BYU. But well, tonight, their defense has done its part. Ben Bywater here with the tackle. Blake Mangelson 
in on the play as well. Third down and 14. That's been a defensive overhaul, much needed for BYU after their struggles last year. So far, so good. Trying to put the finishing touches on this one. Time running out for Shoemaker. He throws incomplete. Looking for Shane Johnson. You know, here's the penalty right here. 73 just kind of wanders out. McKendrick Beal and just ends up in the middle of the field kind of for no reason just sort of wanders away and you know these are things that you look at afterwards and learn something from him you can see how upset he is and he's being consoled by his teammates what could have been a little bit of a turnaround for the Bearcats results in another punt but it could have been a game-changing play. Oh, slip from Hobbs Nyberg. Lands on his backside. Only a one-yard return, 49-yard punt. And BYU in the closing stages, 7.48 to go. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. I'm the team mascot. Boy, am I running late. Oh, what a hit. And if you have cut rate car insurance, the cost to cover that might tank your season. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem like me. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not not like like the good, good old days. Old days. Hmm, stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly! You're not the boss of us! Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. Well, it was an incredible debut for Deion Sanders' Colorado Buffaloes team. That starts things off at big noon next Saturday. Oregon-Texas Tech, an intriguing game. Texas Tech, though, Wyoming had their number. They got the doors locked behind him, and Laramie and got beat. Stanford USC, the nightcap on Fox. Oh, the Timmy B and Spencer in L.A. Oh, yeah. Locked down the Sunset Strip, kids. <laughs> Caleb Williams. Of course, uh, leading contender for Heisman. He hasn't been done in a while to win the back-to-back -back years. All those games next Saturday on Fox. They go right back to L.J. Martin. And that's what I would do too. Establish him and then Slovis run a little bit of play action, but Bowen there next is Sam Houston, only giving up one yard to the talented freshman. An undercover recruit, they said, that was a huge get for BYU. No transfer portal, no nothing. Just straight out of high school, into the uniform and into the first game, taking over the offense. Love to see it. Roberts in motion, they give it to Martin, and Martin gets a couple extra yards. Made a nice move off the initial wave, and then nearly slipped by the second. Sure did. I mean, he's working his feet and his hands at the same time. He's got the ball in the right arm. I mean, he just looks the part, and a big, long body for a running back. Six foot two as we have a banged up Bearcat. That's Markel Perry. Preseason FCS All-American last year only appeared in two games with the redshirt situation and he'll be assisted off the field. Sam Houston really can't afford this. Losing this game, yeah, maybe you end up losing this game. They, they've played very hard, but going forward for the rest of the year in Conference USA, Coach Keeler 
wants to be as healthy as possible, obviously. You don't want to see one of your best linebackers, known as Captain Swarm and Compete, helped off the field, Markel Perry. Got a wicked schedule to begin. Air Force next week. Air Force looked good today. Yeah. They'll be played in Houston. And then they visit Houston in mid-September for conference plays. Ball pops away from Roberts. Again, great coverage. This time Isaiah Downs, redshirt senior from Stockton, California. Fourth down and three. Clock stops, 6.37 to go. Roberts couldn't bring that one in and just kind of lackadaisically out. Done. <laughs> Punt it again. And it's just been that kind of night for BYU offensively every time it looks like they've really established something and got LJ Martin going. They just can't stay on the field. Great punt. Rico drives this all the way back to the Sam Houston 14. 68 yard punt. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. There you go! That's what I'm talking about! Is this your plan to watch the game today? Uh, yeah, I have to watch my neighbor's NFL Sunday ticket. It's not your best plan. But you know what it is? My plan from Verizon. Switch now and they'll give you NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV on them. This plan is amazing. Another amazing plan? It's backing away from here very slowly. Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. Football season is here. Get NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV on us. A $449 value. Plus, get a free Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. Only on Verizon. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not like like the good, good old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. <laughs> Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people. Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. All right, well, we've been showing Hot Dog Man all night. Yeah, and look, he's finally got some life injected into him. Before, he was just staring blankly at the field. I mean, he's got more life than the offense. And it looks like he's wearing a Boise State jersey. Yeah, there's a bit of orange. It looks, like that's a, it looks like it's a Boise State. Could be a Banya or a Cravens uh -huh. guy, you know, a couple of those transfers. There you go. I'm glad to see the Hot Dog has got some life in him. These <laughs> offenses, not as much. <laughs> not as much. Sam Houston just 149 yards of offense, low snap, Shoemaker swings it to a day. Oh, another physical tackle. Raider to Mooney, second generation BYU Cougar, the senior. Five yard pickup, second L. He is fast. Just got home from an eight month, only been on a uh, home from his mission eight months and uh, they got him out on the field running around making play. Shoemaker. Quick delivery, Jay Rockwell makes the catch. First down for the Bearcats. This is only a two-score game, and there's plenty of time. Sam Houston's got three timeouts. Now, have they shown the ability offensively to get first down after first down and score? They have not, but it's still a little bit of a precarious situation for the Cougars who just can't stay on the field offensively consistently. The trouble with the snap. Shoemaker somehow got rid of it. Arbacek made the catch, but his knee was down. So the play is whistled dead immediately. Yeah, it looked like John Nelson got there right as Shoemaker was delivering that ball. There you see John Nelson, the big junior out of Salem, Utah. A lot of time coming off the clock here for Sam Houston. 
Now Shoemaker escapes somehow. Runs into Max Tooley. It's going to be a third down after an eight-yard pickup. Third and short coming up. And they're going to have to get some pace going here. And off Malik Phillips tackled in the backfield. Third down, they try to go fast and catch BYU off guard by hitting the edge, but too fast is the Cougars defense. Camden Garrett getting out there and making a really nice play, creating a loss of yardage. And they're going to send the punt unit out. I mean, at, the, at this rate, might as well go for it, right? You'd think, yeah. Yeah, with four minutes left, they have all three timeouts. Maybe they figure they're going to get a stop and turn things around quickly, but and a kick. Mm. Been a lot of those. This one will bounce shy of the goal line, be downed at the two. So you get one of those three and outs like you've been getting all night. Right. Confuse Keaton Slovis. Don't let LJ Martin or Robbins get loose on you. And maybe you have some better field position, but it's a two-score game, and it's under four minutes now. So really kind of a coin flip there for Casey Keeler. Now, I, it's week one, so I'm sure that's going to be part of the takeaway from both coaches. But, you know, talking to uh, Coach A-Rod, Aaron Roderick, the offensive coordinator for BYU, you know, he was saying, we're not going to do too much. You know, we're not going to line up because they are known to shift and be very multiple and lots of different personnel groupings. And he said they weren't going to do as much, but offensively, they look as uh, green as ever. Speaking of uh, players that we thought would be a little green, LJ right? Martin, uh, not so much. And, you know, that should have been a, I mean, these are little things that you notice as a running back. Is it a huge deal? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that should have been a one-yard loss. This guy ends up leaning forward and taking Seth Mason, a 285-pound guy, for a four-yard ride. And now it's second and eight. That kind of stuff really changes the picture of how an offense operates when you have a back that can do something like that. Timeout called by Sam Houston. And yeah, they're working to get the ball back here for better field position. Remember, BYU's been pumping, stuffing out of the ball. With Rico, other than the ill-fated fake punt call in the first half, which I'm sure everybody wants to forget, that where's Cougar Blue? Well, BYU, fewest points they allowed in the game last season was week two against Baylor. They had that dramatic win over the Bears. It was a 26-20 victory. 20 points allowed. That was the fewest all of last season. They really struggled stopping the run. Tonight, the defense has looked pretty good. Short up. Martin again, following his lead blocker. And that's Tasse, I believe. Yeah, it was. A 12-yard pickup and a first down. Watch the patience here, Alex. Look at him get the ball in the right arm, headed to the right place. Get underneath the block there, like you mentioned from Tasse, and just lean forward and let his big body work. This guy really has a feel for the game. A lot of the time, you know, it's just instinct with these backs. You come in the game, you get the ball, and you just do the right things. The last freshman I saw that really had a feel like that was a young man named Lindale White, who complimented Reggie Bush at USC as Thunder and Light. Again, this time spun down by Chris Murray. It's easy to forget, too, for BYU. Last year, they began the season 4-1. and one. Had that upset win over number 9, Baylor. And then they had a four-game losing streak. Injuries started to pile up. They lost to Notre Dame, Arkansas, Liberty, and then the real clincher, the thing that really put the nail in their season, was East Carolina. Yeah, the Pirates. But they wound up being bowl eligible. They defeated SMU in the New Mexico Bowl. You know, the coaching staff, Kalani Sataki, was really proud of how they fought through adversity. They got through those injuries. I had a note just on my board from last year. It said, <laughs> he said, it almost felt like they were just trying to survive to get to their bye week. Yeah, they, they, you know, they were in independence, you know, with playing all kinds of, not a lot of consistency yeah. there, traveling all around. 
Uh, that being said, they did have a, overcome a lot of injuries, and they ended up making a bunch of staff changes when the regular season ended before the bowl game, and that's why you have a brand new defensive coordinator here in Jay Hill. Uh, Sam Houston has called all the timeouts now, and we'll see if uh, BYU ends up giving the ball back, but they've made a lot of changes in the program personnel-wise. Obviously, they're going to a different place with the Big 12. They're in it now. Those games haven't started yet, but they're in it. Last year, they only faced five Power 5 schools. This year, they double that. And Martin again. Certainly earned his touches as the night went along. That's his 15th carry of the night. Picks up a handful of yards here. He's trying to get to the 90-yard mark in his collegiate debut. This is third down and six now. Isn't that interesting, Alex? He didn't touch the ball in the first half. I don't think he played in the first half. We didn't have him out on the field. It was Robbins and Deion Smith running the ball in the first half. And you come in in the second half and end up carrying the ball 15 times. There you see Robbins looking on from the, the sideline. This game belongs to L.J. Martin thus yep. far. Keaton Slovis with the two rushing touchdowns for BYU. And the only scores they've needed as Martin surges ahead here. Number 27, L.J. Will not Martin, be enough area. for a first down. Well, the clock will move inside of two minutes to play, and Sam Houston cannot stop the clock. The other thing, given the back the ball and what you would call here the situation for Kalani Sataki's team is a four-minute drill. Now you're trying to run clock uh, to trust a true freshman back in that situation, not to fumble, yeah. to handle the situation right. Uh, that That is a lot. They, they said this guy was ready, didn't play in the first half, came out in the second and showed his ability to carry this offense. That's, that's really what he did. That said, this is the ninth punt for BYU tonight. Well, I didn't say it was pretty. No. <laughs> no. Fielded at the 19. And this will be brought out by Noah Smith. Seven-yard return. Rico's had a nice night punting the ball. 56-yarder there. I, I, you know, one more thing here. This, Assuming this is Sam Houston's last touch of the ball here. I think a lot for this team in their FBS debut that they can come away with proud of the way that they showed up here tonight. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they came in as a great defensive football team with great linebackers. They showed that. We knew that the quarterback situation was a little bit up in the air. Keegan Shoemaker ended up getting the start. I don't think he's played poorly, but offensively, they, they might have been just up against a bigger and stronger, faster opponent here and they just couldn't find a rhythm to catch them off guard. Their defense gave them plenty of opportunities to do so. Stack receiver set, ball nearly picked off. So if you're the Bearcats now, you're depending on Shoemaker's ability to run a two-minute drill, score, get an onside kick, score again, touchdown, to force overtime. Oh, or you go for two. <laughs> well, I was going to say, one foot in front of the other here. They need to get a score. Absolutely. Need to get a first down. The last shutout for BYU was November 22nd, 2014, against Savannah State, one of those late season kind of throwaway guarantee games, a 64 0 win. Last time they beat an F FBS team without allowing a point was Hawaii in September of 2012. Delay of game Delay here. Delay game. Sam Houston, five-yard penalty, second down. No timeouts to get out of that one. And kind of cool, grinding to its end with Sam Houston trying to at least get some experience running a two-minute drill. You know, they did get the stop and force the punt, but not enough time to really do what they need to do. Shoemaker connects at the 40-yard line with Smith. We'll move the sticks. Final minute. 
Shoemaker to his left. Can't get away. Shoemaker Bad by in. water. And many of the starters on D remaining in the game for BYU as they look to close this out. Ben Bywater from Olympus High School in Salt Lake City, home of the Titans. Winds up being an incomplete pass. Got cool hair. They might have the best hair on the team. A lot of cool hair at BYU. Hard to see with a helmet on this. You didn't get to see her Botrix hair. Did you? No, he had great hair too. Yeah, you talked to him the other day. Forty-seven seconds to go, and Shoemaker heaves it downfield. Flag comes in. Shoemaker's pass incomplete. Bywater really putting extreme pressure again on Shoemaker. Second down over. Okay. okay. Holding. Holding. Offense, Offense number 59. 10 yard penalty. It's second down. Second down at 20. Shoemaker again. And this one will reach the sideline again, bringing up third down. So BYU, this is how their schedule plays out over the next couple of weeks. Southern Utah comes in for just the second time. They pressured Arizona State yeah. a couple nights ago. Arkansas, that's a return trip after Arkansas came this way last year. And then they will open up Big 12 play against Kansas. A shame that that 2022 season kind of collapsed the way that it did after the injury to Jalen Daniels. Everybody likes what Leipold's doing in oh. Kansas. This is in and out of the hands. And what could have been another interception Maybe Malik that's a makeup for the uh, interception a little bit earlier. <laughs> yeah. Looks like Malik Moore had a great shot to pad his stats there and just could not come down with it. I mean, it turned out to be the turning point in the game, the interception that stood after the video review and the sequence that followed wound up being the BYU touchdown to make it 14 nothing, and Sam Houston just didn't have a response. You know, and I don't know how threatened the Bearcats were to the uh, BYU secondary as far as Shoemaker throwing the ball and tearing them apart, but got to feel pretty good if you're BYU. They lost both their starting safeties in camp. Micah Harper's out for the season. Uh, Talon Alfrey is out, but not for the year. Uh, both of those guys were not available in this game. Malik Moore, Ethan Slade, Raider DeMooney. Those guys have played pretty well in their stead. Yeah, it's actually a good point you raise because outside of Malik Moore, they're without a single upperclassman at safety. And their corners are somewhat unproven at this level. So they're, they're, there are still some questions defensively for BYU despite the reconstruction project that they sure. undertook in the offseason. The corners were physical in this game, though. Robinson yep. and Heckard and Camden Garrett, the, the nickel made some good plays. Could be the final play for Sam Houston here, and this is picked by Eddie Hecker. Eighth career interception, and the first at the FBS level for Hecker, who transfers in from Weber State. Hecker coming in with the D coordinator, Jay Hill. Goes up and snatches that one away from his teammate. <laughs> Malik Moore had the best chance to pick that one off. And Hacker came and took it from him. And that'll do it. Well, not the cleanest of performances for BYU, especially in the, on the offensive side of the ball, but a good start defensively, considering how south things went last year for Kalani Sataki's team. And one thing I know for sure is they identified a playmaker in the backfield. 
in L.J. Martin. Quite the freshman debut for a true freshman at BYU. And the first time that the Cougars have shut out an FBS opponent in 11 years. Well, there's obvious respect for what KC Keeler has built at Sam Houston. And the feeling that these Bearcats will make some noise in Conference USA this year. Oh, I think they'll be quite comfortable and they'll be along with, you know, Coastal Carolina and a lot of other teams that we really respect that have made the move from the FCS to the FBS and, and had success. This guy Keeler knows what he's doing, and I was really impressed with the way their defense fought a bigger and stronger BYU offense and really frustrated them for most of the game. Two rushing touchdowns for Keaton Slovis. And the first game for BYU as a member of the Big 12 Conference. A 14-0 shutout victory over Sam Houston. So for Petros Papadakis and our entire Fox Sports crew, this is Alex Faust bidding you a good evening from Provo as the Cougars win it 14-0. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. If you have moderate to severe Crohn's disease, SkyRizzy is the first and only IL-23 inhibitor that can deliver clinical remission and endoscopic improvement. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine or plan to. Liver problems may occur in Crohn's disease. Control of Crohn's means everything to me. Ask your gastroenterologist about SkyRizzy. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. Eh, uh, Senor Mayor, with this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you! Eh, hey, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But these ones round. No, I don't know. Maybe a Red Bull will help you see it from a different slant. Yes, I got it. We'll build it like this. Perfecto! Red Bull gives you wings. Are you surprised by the reaction no. from the outside of, of what people are saying about the, the exodus? No, not whatsoever because it's always been that way. I'm used to that. I'm accustomed to, to adversity. I'm accustomed to having and understanding ridicule. Most influential people in the sport talking about the sport globally. This time on the Joel Klatt Show's Big Noon Conversations, I talked to Coach Prime about why he picked Colorado. Coach Prime. Yes, sir. Thank you for being here, man. Thank, I appreciate thank you. it. It's thank great you for to having see you. me. Um, this has uh, been a really fun series to go around and talk with what I consider to be the most influential people in college football. I'm um, honored. Absolutely. I'm honored. Absolutely. Now, to some degree, I should say, like, welcome, mm -hmm. because this is my home in a uh, lot of regards. This is your house. <laughs> not not my house, yeah. but uh, I remember when I was, shoot, man, I was five, six years old. My dad bringing me and sitting me in the North Stands here at wow. Folsom for my first college game. That's where I fell in love with college football. That love has continued. You know, it's why I love my job so That's much. That's unbelievable, man. Wanted to play here. Um, so I know why I love this place. Mm -hmm. I'm interested just to hear you like, why Colorado? <coughs> why, why, why are you not? Here? Why not? First of all, our beloved AD Rick George gave me a tremendous opportunity. Mm -hmm. He laid something in front of me, and I saw candidly a need. I'm a need to be needed type person. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say it. I said it. Okay. You show me a need, I got you. That's right. You show me you 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 don't need me. I, I got you still. <laughs> I won't be around. There was a tremendous need, a tremendous want, a tremendous desire of excellence. Mm -hmm. I love that challenge. That's what wakes me up in the morning. That's what gets me going. That's what makes me, you know, start yeah. moving and bouncing. That yeah. that. Here goes an opportunity for another challenge. Why do you think I went from Atlanta to San Francisco, San Francisco to Dallas? 
It's a challenge, man. I, I thrive on that type of stuff, and I love it. And he gave me this opportunity, and I took it and ran with it. It's fascinating from my seat because I evaluate teams. Yeah. I know what Colorado was. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think. Here's the thing. I don't think a lot of people do. Yes, they do. They, they, well, no, they see they the do. record, right? No, like they, they, they see do. one in eleven, but there's other teams that no, had no, one they, win. They, they, they do. don't know what this they, was, man. They do. They just want to take a shot at me, and I'm good with that. They do. They know what it was, but this is their opportunity to take a shot. But they better. They better shoot now. Sure. Because in a moment, you're not going to be able to shoot. Are you surprised by the reaction no. from the outside of, of what people are saying about the, the exodus? No, not whatsoever because it's always been that way. Hmm. Even when I was starting out in sports, I was the one that was not voted most likely to succeed. Undersized, this and that. It was always a problem. It was always always that until I got out there and did it. Then, oh, 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 we knew all along he was going, no, you didn't, stop. So I'm, I'm used to that. I'm accustomed to, to adversity. I'm accustomed to being, to having an understanding ridicule and disbelief. From my seat, I think it's, it's like, a, almost like a prime effect. Right. Uh, and the prime effect is that those that want to see you fail, Mm -hmm. everything that happens they're going to take and make it a 10 right you know so they're going to multiply everything that they say and do by a 10 true and then there are people that also think everything that you do is is the best Mm -hmm. and they're going to multiply it by 10 so everything that happens Mm -hmm. every bit of coverage that you get or have gotten now that you're at colorado has been multiplied by 10 one way or the other to me that's the prime somewhat yeah i i you can say that but um, some of it is without reason or understanding mm. or intelligence of the matter. When the president gets the seat of being the president, what happens <laughs> to the cabinet? He enacts his agenda, <laughs> right? So what am I doing that's no different than any um, CEO or any person um, of standard of status that have uh, um, claimed this position. Mm-hmm. My feeling and my thought and my understanding is I got to get it right now. Let's go get it now. People made a big stink out of who we let go, but not a big stink out of who we brought in. Right. See, now there's competition at practice. Forget offense versus defense. I'm talking about versus the rush ends. The inside guys, the linebackers, you got to compete to even get on the darn field. The secondary, the six foot and above at the cornerback's position, that long arms, jump out the gym, very athletic, and can house that thing if they get it. Mm. Safety's physical, versatile, can cover the slot, but they're bangers. Not only that, they can cover in their ball getters. Yeah. The receiving core is ridiculous. Ridiculous. And I'm, I'm excited about them, but then we got guys to block for them. There's only two guys in this whole organization that gets a record, and their last name is Sanders. <laughs> that's, that's true. So I know about we, that. We got to make sure yep. we take care of that one back there with the ball. That's right. All right. When we do that, he's going to make the necessary read, the proper throws, because he's very accurate. He's always been his whole darn life. And we're going to get some things done because we have those little <laughs> intangibles that's going to make it work. It's very rare that you have – really good talent Mm -hmm. and a really good coaching staff and you don't win think about that i have seen no one to disagree about the level of the coaching staff so why would you find fault in the way we're going about acclaiming the kids right but you said nothing about me assembling the coaching staff so i'm good at that and not good at that <laughs> that the simply the coaching staff is harder than the kids. Hundred percent. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Hundred percent. Right. There's no way we're gonna have this and not that. Your first game is gonna be against the team that lost to Georgia in the yeah. national championship game, TCU. I, What's I want going that. to happen? I want that. I, I love that. I embrace that. I engulf that. I envision that. I expect that. Mm. Why wouldn't I? I'm a winner. Why wouldn't I? Why would I want our kids on a the largest stage in college football on that weekend. Why wouldn't I? 
reached peak fall. The DQ Fall Blizzard menu, snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie, they're back. Cloud, cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Senior Mayor, with this tower, I will make Pisa world famous. And you? Yeah, you can see towers like this in Rome, in Venice, in Florence. But this one's round. No, I don't know. Maybe a red bull will help you see it from a different slant. Yes, I got it. We'll build it like this. Perfetto! Red Bull gives you wings. So then you, you get in the portal. No one's been as active as you in the portal. Mm -hmm. um, no one's been as successful as you in the portal. You we, had the number we, one transfer class. We did the same thing in Jackson, my man, but it was Jackson. Well, no, and you didn't, they didn't give it that type of credit 100%. and that type of attention, but we did the same thing. So then NIL as well. You know? NIL is not a problem with me. Collectors are. Let, let's talk about NIL. Name, image, and likeness. What kid out of high, let's just take it a high school part first, that is notable enough that a CEO of a major company is going to lay it on the line for a kid that ain't nobody know? Not many. There you go. So it's not NIL. It may be four guys in all of college football that we've seen on a commercial nationally. We happen to have probably two of them here, okay? Shador and Travis. NIL, they're killing it. Collectives, you could be Tom, Dick, Harry, and Larry, and you just put a bag together. Yeah. Uh, boosters or whatever, or whatever, whoever does it, and try to solicit these kids to yeah. come to your university. Who is that helping? I want the kid to get compensated. I want him to be straight um, by all means. But you got to balance the fine line. Is he still going to want it? Like that, when you've just given him that and he didn't have to earn it, I wish it was a kind of a a way to measure your ability and what you bring to the table. Yeah, before. Before. Yeah. These I know. kids got not only agents; they got the homies who's representing them, who's just trying to use them and play to, play in them. They don't go to the school that they should go to. They don't even ask questions about the defense or the offense or the scheme or the personnel or how you're going to use me. Um, what am I going to get? Out. That's what you're going to get. Out. <laughs> that, that, you know what I'm saying? If that's your prerogative, your first thing, I don't want you. Mm. I want you to chase that NFL bag. Yeah. That's the real one. I want you, that's, the, that's what's going to sustain you. That's right. This may maintain you for whatever. It's crazy now, man. It's crazy. It really is. Although, you say four or five guys in college that are on national ads. You know, I can think of a guy in, back in the 80s that would have been on national ads. It would have been nice. You would have done really well. It, it would have been nice. <laughs> but I had the game. You had the game. That's See, I had right. the game. See, right now, they, they, they put in the bag before the game. The game has to come before the bag. Ball out. We want to give it to you when you ball. I wouldn't mind if it was play like objectives. Sure. Yeah. Almost contractual. There you go. Yeah. Then you know. Performance bonuses, right. things of that nature. Yeah. I want them to be happy. I want them to be comfortable. I don't want them to be filthy rich. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. Because I, I don't want that taken away from this. Because I want you to... Longevity, man. I want you to get that NFL bag. I want you to get that Jalen Hurts bag, man. That Lamar that's Jackson a, bag. That's I, a I want big you to get bag. I want you to get <laughs> to that point or even a quarter of that point. Well, as you know, that hunger and that that drive mm -hmm. that you're talking about, that fire yeah. deep, 
That has to burn for a while. Yeah. Because that bag doesn't show up until you're four years in the NFL. That's right. So you don't. It's not just what you get when you come in as a high school player or a mm-hmm. transfer into college. You got to then get drafted. Then you got to go and you got you got to play, play for five, six, seven years. Yes. Consistently and be on your way up. You can't be on your way down. You got to be on your way up because either you're coming and going in this world. It's one or the other. You either coming or you going. We coming. <laughs> I was going to let you say Oh, that was a good setup, wasn't it? <laughs> we coming. It was. I'll see you in Fort Worth, my man. I can't wait. All right. I, I'm telling you, I'm going to have a swag out of this world when you see me. I can. You better. Because <laughs> by that time, I would have been and seen the blueprint of what's going to transpire. I can't wait. Appreciate your time. Thank you, boss. You got it. Thank you. you Thank you, it. everybody.